So this jury, this jury, when you get up there and you put your hand up, it's time for you to swear in. What's your story? Someone broke into my motel room while I wasn't no. aware of it. Exactly. Got my keys from my truck, drove my truck to Sherry's house, used my phone, drove it back, and put the phone back in my room and the keys no. and hold because that's absurd. It is. Yeah. Okay. Your truck, your phone were there. No one broke in your house, your motel room. Right. So therefore you drove it, you used the phone. What were you doing in their neighborhood? Welcome to AMC Investigations. We put out multiple videos every single week, so make sure you're subscribed. I would like to thank all of you for watching and all of our members. You are truly appreciated. Okay, enough rambling. Let's get into it. April 21st, 2008, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. 52-year-old Sherry Engel runs to her neighbor's house in a panic saying she could not find her husband, Fred Engel. Upon searching the neighborhood for Fred, they eventually find what appears to be blood and a pair of glasses on the ground near their communal mailbox bank. And in the early morning hours of April 22nd, police find the body of Fred Engel in the woods approximately 30 feet from the mailboxes. It appeared he was struck in the back of his head and a shoestring was tied around his neck. He was no longer alive. During the investigation, detectives noticed a block of phone calls on Sherry's line from the night of Fred's murder during the time in which Sherry said she was asleep. The phone number in question was later linked to Timmy Rogers of Leachfield, Kentucky. I apologize, Kentuckians, if I pronounce that wrong. He was 40 years old at the time, and uh, Timmy was allegedly having an affair with Sherry Engel at the time as well. And Myrtle Beach detectives made the trip to Kentucky, where Timmy lived, to question him. This is the interrogation of Timmy Rogers, and we will also have the interrogation of Sherry Engel up in the next couple of days, so make sure you are subscribed with the notifications on. But first, let us have a moment of silence for the victim in this case. I'm gonna have a lot of questions for you, and you may see me writing notes, you may see me writing notes. Um, don't pay any attention to that. Like you said, that you know we're human, so we can't remember yes. everything. We'll have to write some stuff down occasionally. And that's also why we've got the recording devices. We want to make sure we get everything right and don't make any errors. You know, okay. writing notes down and stuff like that. Uh, if we ask you a question, you can give us an answer, and one of us interrupts you. And I'm gonna apologize up front because it's going to happen. Okay. Um, but we're not doing it out of any disrespect. It just may, may be that we have some kind of a thought at that moment that we need to kind of go ahead and expand on. Okay. And we want to kind of stop you where you're at. So apologize up front. And I'm just a little bit slow on my answers for things. I've, I've had a lot of stuff lately. I went through divorce and everything like that. I haven't cut through all that. So I'm going to try to answer as good as I can. You okay. Know? I understand. That's all I ask you to do. Yeah. Just answer as best you can and be honest and straightforward and up front with us. And, you know, that, that's, we can't really ask more of that than anybody mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Obviously, we're both police officers. And just like when you see on television if we talk to people we have to advise you some of some things ahead of time so okay. let me go ahead and get that out of the way um, so we can get going with this right. can you read right okay yes what was the high school education 12. 12 so you graduated yes did you know that this video was already available on our patreon and this case and many other cases will have lots of extras for you on our Patreon as well. Not only is it a great way to support the channel, you will get a lot of exclusive and early content as well. We have a free trial over there, so make sure you check us out. The link is below. Okay, back to the video. Yeah, are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? No. Yeah. I took a, actually, I took a half of a Xanax last night to go to sleep, and that's all. I have, that's the only thing I've ever taken. I never took drugs or drank or nothing okay. like that. About what time was that last night? Uh, it was an afternoon, some five, six, seven, something like that. Was that by prescription? Or no, that was somebody else's. That was. They just last night they were there. I was helping them at the house. They just gave me one. Actually, Sherry did. She gave me one. A okay. half of one. Okay. What I'll do is I'm read through each one of these. And, uh, I'm going to ask you to initially at the end of each sentence, and all that tells us that you understand, you know, the sentence that we're talking about. Okay. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. The officers went to your house. Is that where they? 
where I was staying. I was staying with Bobby and Faye down there. She had asked me to stay down there with them and help them out because Faye can't move around right now very well. And Bobby's needs time to himself. I was just kind of helping around and stuff. How long you been doing that? Oh gosh. A week, a little over, something like that. What's wrong with Faye? She had a stroke. Uh, I don't know, it's been several months ago. Getting better? Yeah, yeah. She's, her left side and stuff is paralyzed and she's getting mobility. She's been going to physical therapy and stuff. How old is she? I, I'm not sure. I don't know exactly. 50, maybe. I don't know the exact age. I never asked enough questions. <laughs> well, I mean, if you were staying there for a little while, I didn't know. But you knew them before that? Probably, gosh, a few months ago, I started going to Bible study with him there. He's a preacher. Okay. And that's how we got to know each other, through Sherry, too, you know, because she's a friend of mine. And, you know, they've been helping me out because I've been needing somebody to be around. I've been by myself for a while. Right. And it does, helps to help them out, too, you know. Yes, sir. Hmm. I don't want to ask you too much because I hate for Detective Hawes to come in and then you have to repeat things again. So just okay. wait on him to grab his notebook. Okay. Oh, he's doing that. Oh, here it comes. Okay. This room is here. I remember slipping past the oh, see it. Gosh. If there's a snake, I can do it. Okay. Um, we're going to start out with the very basic stuff. Um, okay. What's, what's your full name? Timmy James Rogers. R O G R S. E R S. Okay. Now, what's your date of birth? <clears throat> Can you know your social? Okay, do you have a physical address, a home address where you live at? Actually, I have a P.O. Box. It's P.O. Box. Harned. How you spell it? H-A-R-N-E-D. Kentucky, 41144. So where are you living at now? I'm staying with Bobby and then when I got a divorce a little over a year ago, my wife took everything. And I've been I've been living in a motel in E-Town. I worked up there a while and they just kind of let me stay there with them for starting about a little over a week ago. Okay. Do you know that address? No. No? Okay. Um, you got a cell phone or anything? How can we get in touch with you? Yeah, I do. Oh, well, they got it. Uh, Somebody that's one of the places that he's taken. What's that number? It's uh, Perry Cove. Okay. And were you born and raised in this area? Yeah. Well, I was born in Louisville mm -hmm. and moved down here when I was about three years old. And then I was raised here, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a little family here? My son. How old is he? He's 17. He lives in uh, Madrid. He's just right down the road. Uh, the rest of my mom lives in Florida, my dad lives in Eastern Kentucky, uh, my sisters live in Louisville, my brother lives in Mobile, Alabama. How many brothers and sisters you have? I got one on mom's side, I got one half brother mm -hmm. and two half sisters. Mm -hmm. And on my dad's side, which I haven't met very much, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time with him, I just met him when I was about 20. And he's got kids, so he's got. Uh, one brother and one sister, which I've never met. So, I mean, I've got a pretty big family, just you're not real fancy, you're familiar with all of them. Yeah, when I was little, uh, mom and him separated and stuff, and she kept me away from him, so I didn't meet him until I was about 20, so I don't know my family on that side very well. I mean, I right. visited him and stuff, but I right. so about holidays and stuff like that. Some, you know, just you never really got to know him that well because he's my dad's kind of 
different. He sees the psychiatrist and stuff. And what in the world? I'm not really sure. I never got into it. Mm-hmm. You know, does he have like a depression issue, or he has something he was born with? Or? I'm not sure. He he. Uh, God, I can't think. Uh, He's, all I know is they say not to, to upset him too much, you know, so I never asked any questions about mm-hmm. that. They, they upset, you know, not to upset him. And, and I understand. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's family has a problem. You know, mine does, and yours does, and mm-hmm. everybody's does. It's nothing to do. What does your son do? Is he a student? Yeah. Or is he at school at? Brick County High School. Yeah. He's 17, so he's, he's a junior senior? Yeah, he's in 10th grade. In 10th grade. He failed a year. Oh, yeah. My ex wife did too, so small world on that one as well. Um, who do you hang around with here? Some Bobby and him. Just Bobby's. Yeah, I don't really have. Well, he's the one that's uh, a preacher, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Where's his church at? He doesn't have a church. He preaches Bible study out of his house and stuff every Sunday morning. Is it just Sunday morning? Yep. Nothing on during the week? No, I've never seen, not since I've been there and I haven't ever heard anything. Mm-hmm. Where, um, where are you working at? Then? I'm not, I'm on employment. All right. Well, I worked for Henning Construction here for 12 years in Brick County. When did you start and finish with them? Oh gosh. Uh, was it was it twelve years full time or yeah okay yeah when when did you end how about that uh, about a year ago actually about a year from now yeah was it May of seven oh seven and then I worked in in E Town hey, for hang on what was the name of that I'm company sorry. in uh, I'm sorry the twelve year company Henning Construction H E N N I N G yes what kind of construction is that home and custom homes. So you're a carpenter or yes, a carpenter. framer, any specific yeah. like that? Just carpenter, framer, we do it all, I did it all. Did you, I mean, did you do the general con- carpentry, the finished work, I mean? I, that, everything, all of everything, the concrete work, landscaping, roofing, oh, cool. everything. Uh, so after any construction, who did you work for? That was that was up till May of 07. Yeah, something like that. And then, uh, let's see, and like I said, because of the divorce and stuff, I wasn't thinking clearly, so I took some time off. I when, when did that happen? Started. Kind of blocked it out a little bit. Yeah, I <laughs> Early in the year of 2007, January, February, something like that, I think. God, I can't even remember. Uh, but anyway, since I got the divorce, I took some time off. I stayed with my sister for a while in Louisville. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I moved to E-Town. I got a job mm-hmm. for working for a temp agency, Spherion, at UPS. I worked oh, there for about four months. Four months of 07? Yes, and it ended in January the 8th is when they laid me off. Of 08? January 8th of 2008. Laid off by who again? Spirion. S-P-H-E-R-I-O-N. And what did they do? They were a temp agency. But they had put you with UPS? Yes. What'd you do for UPS? They just label boxes and, and move boxes around. And they trained me on a little bit on the forklift and stuff. Okay, so that was, that was up to January 8th of 08? Yes. Since then? So who came after that? Huh? Who came after then? Nobody. 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 So you've been employed since January yes. of this year? Yes. You've been trying to find some work? I'm yes. sure that's an obligation to, yes. to draw that employment. Yes. Where have you been looking? Uh, gosh, I've got an application here at Whitworth Tool. I've got an application at Wapaka in Indiana. Uh, just everywhere I see, I stop. You know, big old tires, just anything, you know. Uh, God, I can't even think of it all. Of, of you have to do something like every week or every yeah, two once weeks. Yeah, once a week. You have to, it's a minimum mm-hmm. you know, that they require. Mm-hmm. That sense. Okay. Um, do you ever travel around very much, going around the country, other countries, stuff like that? Uh, so you wouldn't have a passport or anything? No, uh, no stamps in that? No. Um, you ever travel around? At all? Yeah. Where you been? Yeah. Oh gosh, been to Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Oh, that's where mom lives. How often do you go there? Okay. I ain't been there but twice. And the last time was quite a while ago. That's where your mother is? Yes. What town? Uh, Vero Beach. Okay. Um, been in Tennessee, just passing through, just driving down there. Get, actually, get fireworks one time. Yeah, I understand. We, we sell fireworks, but we're fine. Okay. And then in Indiana, you know, same thing, or go over and apply for jobs, or just go to the store, or whatever. Drove to Missouri one time, just to say I went to Missouri. <laughs> I know it's kind of odd, I guess. But. Anywhere on any trips, any vacations, recreation, you can all have it, other than going to Florida? I uh, went to uh, uh, Smoky Mountains, me and my wife and son, a couple of times. How long was that? Shh, gosh. Five, six, seven years, something like that. Yeah, I'm taking trips recently. No. What is Missouri like? I've never been to Missouri. Actually, when we, when me and my wife were driving, I was working on my truck and I wanted to get it out on the interstate driving. And mm -hmm. we just kept driving, driving. And I, she said something about Missouri. I said, well, let's just go. Yeah. So all we did was just cross the river, <laughs> went over and yeah. got a coat and turn around and come back. That's, That's cool. I, I, I thought it was kind of spontaneous. I don't, I don't know if I've been in Missouri. Thank you. Um, you ever been to Myrtle Beach before? Yes. Have you? Yes. When'd you been there? Uh, well, actually, Sherry was helping me. She said there were plenty of jobs and stuff down there, so I went down there for a while and applied for jobs. When was that? Just a few weeks ago. It's supposed to date May 5th, so that would have been April. Yeah. Um, got any idea about William? Uh, let's see. I, I just, he came back uh, a little over a week ago. A week ago, okay. Yeah. Or a week ago, something like that, you know. I don't know what day it was, the end of last month, you know, somewhere around the 28th, 27th, 28th, something like that. All right, well, you said before that you've been staying with Mr. Bobby. Do you call him Mr. Bobby, Mr. Carmen, or what do you call him? Bobby. Bob's called Bobby. Uh -huh. um, you were staying with Bobby, I guess you said about the last week or so, 10 days or so. Yeah. Um, how did you come in with Sherry, contact with Sherry last month for her to suggest that you get one of those little jobs? When I got the divorce, okay, I met her, and she's been kind of helping me through the divorce, just kind of keeping me... Mm -hmm. Telling me things to do to help me along the way, mm -hmm. you know. She's been a good friend. When was the horse in January of 07? So yeah. it's been a yeah. year and... Yeah, we've been friends for three or four months or so yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What kind of relationship do you guys have? She helps a lot, you know. She just talks to me when I get depressed and stuff, you know, from things. Mm -hmm. She just kind of always had a way of helping me through, you know, and then she introduced me to Bible study with Bobby and him. When was that? Well, the first time? A few months ago. Well, I can't remember when exactly. I don't remember dates. So was it back in the when it was cold, or was it back in the fall, or? Uh, I mean, a few months ago, it kind of leaves a big gap. The trees were off, the leaves were off the trees, so yeah, it was, it was back in the winter. Yeah. What is uh, what kind of preaching does Bobby do? I mean, what kind what kind of faith is it? It's, it there's no denomination. It's called Grace Gospel. Uh -huh. If you read the New Testament stuff, grace is you're living under grace. Mm -hmm. You're the Ten Commandments, all the laws and stuff like that. The Ten Commandments, you don't have to go by them anymore. You you live under grace. You're not under any laws as far as mm -hmm. in the Bible. Uh, you know, the, I don't know how to say it. Uh, you, you have to realize that Jesus died on the cross for you, you know, and he died for your sins. 
and your the, the laws and ordinances that are teached in a lot of the churches around here are not right you know if you read the Bible in that context it, it becomes more clear that you know like uh, gosh I mean I can't even I understand what you're saying. Uh, you're doing fine. Okay. I, I'm just the beginning on it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm still learning mm -hmm. everything. Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy yeah, it, it helps. It, it, it helps when I get depressed. It really does. Mm -hmm. You know. How many people usually participate? Four or five. Just four or five. Yeah. Does he travel around and do that? Yeah, I think I, they were talking about going to Arkansas mm -hmm. this past month or so, something like that, you know, they travel to Arkansas every now and then, it's every once a year, I think, mm -hmm. you know, for a, some kind of a reunion thing or revival, tent revival or something like that. Yeah, I understand. Um, you said, let me back up here a second, you said you've gone to Myrtle Beach in April, you ever been there before, before that, that's the first time you've been? No, I've been before, I went down there before. Okay. Uh, oh gosh. How long ago? And I can't remember. But I had been down there before, yes. Uh, three months, maybe. Something like that. I don't know. Two, three months, three, four. I don't know. Somewhere in there. I mean, I, my, my all where I stayed at Value Place there at Myrtle Beach, all my records are there from when I was there. Mm -hmm. So that would be Value Place. Where's that at? It's on 501. What's it's right question? down from the employment office. Or, uh, is, is that uh, close to the, what's it close to? There's a Waffle House, there's a gas station, there's a uh, AutoZone. Uh, it's probably 10 minutes away from the beach, 15 minutes away from the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a Lowe's right across from the unemployment office, uh, which is, the unemployment office is probably, I don't know, 10 minutes down the road from it. Mm -hmm. Did you go there and apply for any job? Did yes. you check in anything there? Yes. What kind of stuff did you apply for there? Carpentry, uh, school, I applied for school system. Mm -hmm. I actually had an interview with them, but they didn't need me. Uh, so like a maintenance job? No, I was actually working in the kitchen. I was wanting a maintenance. Uh -huh. You know, I actually told him before, you know, if I could get a maintenance, I'd like to try it. You, know, you can bring up the schools, that makes me think of something. You ever been arrested before? No. Never at all? No. No speed tickets? No. Tickets. I got a speeding ticket when I was about 18 or 19. That was a while ago. Yeah. No seat belt tickets, nothing like that? No. Okay. How do you manage to go all these years and not get pinched for something. Seems like most people around here get arrested for something. We've been safe driver and <laughs> most seems like most people around here's got some kind of connection to drugs or stealing no. or something like that. No. Never done nothing like that. No. I don't do drugs, drinking and that like that. Well other than going to apply for jobs at the unemployment office when you're in Myrtle Beach, what else do you do? Nothing, just sit there and Is that the only two times you've been there? Is is the one you said was a couple yes. months ago and this most recent yes. time in April? Yes. Okay. How long were you there for each visit? The passion was three weeks. The first time, I don't know, a couple of weeks or something. Mm -hmm. You know. Makes sense. Like I said, Sherry's been kind of a friend to me, so you know, I right. just kind of when I don't know where to go, she'll say, you know, go here, or whatever. She'd stay there. Mm -hmm. You ever stayed at her house? Huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, she's a good friend. Why couldn't you stay with her? Because she was married. How often do you talk to Sherry on her cell phone? To oh gosh, just about once a day. About. Um, while you were staying in the Middle Beach area? 
about women. How often did you talk with her while you were there? Once a day. Yeah. Did you, how did you get down there? Did you take your, I drove, do you have a vehicle? I, I what, drove, what do you have? It's a 93 S10. What uh, color was it? Primer. Primer. Gray primer. Did you get a wreck or something? How'd you fix it? No, the paint was chipping off. Oh, it was chipping off? Yeah. I understand. How long did that start? The paint? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was like that when I got it. Oh, yeah. Mom gave me it. Where did, did you get it primed? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Did you do that or something like that? Yes, I did. Where'd you do that? Uh, here in Kentucky. I mean, at Bobby's house or? Oh, no. Actually, in the parking lot out there where I bought the primer and stuff from Walmart. Was that Walmart here? Uh, yeah. uh, I know. I, I didn't. Martinsburg, I always forget the name yeah, of the town. Yeah, I didn't want to do it over at his house. I just kind of pulled over it. Put it over to the side. I know it probably looks stupid. I felt dumb for doing it. But I just find stuff to do, keep myself busy. That's what everybody says is the best thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it helps you manage your code, especially if you got a lot of stress on you for some past issues and things. And yeah. Everybody needs an outlet of some kind. Yeah. Um, what happened with your previous marriage? We were married for almost 20 years. Uh, she, I mean, I thought everything was fine for a while there, and she got a job working at Rift River Lodge. Uh, How much you been working there? A couple of years, probably. Where was that? It's in Rift River. It's in Axtell. It's just not too far from here. Mm -hmm. uh, but she had got a job, and the guy she was working with and stuff, we had problems. I mean, well, she had kind of, kind of, yeah, she was having a thing with him. Okay. Uh, How'd you find out? Well, little signs at first, you know, she would come home and just gripey and grumpy and just totally avoid me and it'd be on a computer and talking to him on the phone. And, How'd you know she was talking to you? Oh, well, she would tell me. Oh, really? You know. That's unusual. Yeah. Anyway, she, uh, We had argued and stuff for a long time, you know, or not argued. She'd done most of the arguing. I was just trying to figure out what was going on and what I was doing wrong for her to be meeting with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then she finally came out and told me she was in love with him and stuff. And she didn't love me anymore. Yeah, that's hard. I understand. I mean, doing somebody that long, you have a lot of feelings, a lot of emotion, a lot of connection. Nobody's perfect, and I'm sure there was issues on both sides. Of, you know. I never cheated. I never yeah. did anything wrong. Yeah. What, what kind of excuses did she give you? I wasn't funny enough. Well, what did she expect you to be? A circus clown or something jumping around? I don't know. It's just, I keep blaming myself. Right. And Sherry's the one that was tell, keep telling me it's not my fault. Anytime I bring something up, she'd say it's not my fault. She made me realize you know, a lot of it was me. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, it's I'm still trying, but they say it takes half the time you work mm -hmm. to get over. Mm -hmm. I understand. And Sherry's been a lot of help to you for that? Have you guys kind of developed a relationship, friendship, yeah. real close? Yeah, real close. Has it gone anything beyond that? No, gosh, no. I'm sure. But, yeah, but she's been there for me all the time. I mean, she's been kind of my angel, you know. Uh, that's why I always told her, I always looked at her as my guardian angel. Why do you think that is? Because she introduced me to the Bible and, and everything and, and learning the truth. And, mm -hmm. and, She's been a help. I mean, telling me that things weren't my fault. Uh, I mean, she's always, whenever I've been depressed or whatever, she's always called and checked on me. You know, she yeah. always called and checked every day. She ever paid for anything for you, gave me any money? Yeah, like actually, that? she did. What kind of stuff does that mean? Like? I'm good. Uh, well, she gave me like $140 the other day just to have extra while I was staying with Bobby and him mm -hmm. until I got my unemployment. Mm -hmm. She ever mentioned okay. anything to you about where she gets her money? Because she didn't work anywhere. I, I thought she worked for some 
she retired from something. I just assumed she had it up. Never really came up like a topic of conversation. Uh, I knew they had money, mm -hmm. you know. Did you, you said that $140, has been any other stuff like that she's yeah. done? Yeah. What's that mean? Uh, she's bought me cigarettes before. She, she bought me a pair of tennis shoes, bought me a few pairs of pants. It was just things, I think, just showing me that somebody still cared about me because I didn't have nobody to fall back on. My family's not very close. I stayed with my sister for a while. And she's in Louisville? In Louisville, okay. you know. And they didn't really help a lot. You know, she was telling me that she thought I needed to get away from them. I mean, she's just gonna help. Needed to get away from what? My sister and them, because they were going through a lot of problems too. And I was going through, I was in really bad shape. Mm -hmm. In really, really bad shape. And have you ever used any kind of pills or anything like that ever come out? No, I thought about it. I, I went to uh, Communicare in Elizabethtown to try to help with all the problems I was having and stuff. Uh, what is that? It's just a therapy place. Mm -hmm. They just kind of give you a positive attitude in mm -hmm. life because everything with me was going negative for a long time. And wow. It's still hard to, I still got to try to focus on positive. You know? mm -hmm. Do you, do you know, do you got any more preliminary stuff you want to go before we move on? Covered everything pretty well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what exactly we're looking into? The reason we're here, the reason we brought no. him? You don't have any idea. You, you told me that, or somebody told me that was arrested for the murder of Fred Engel. Yeah, that's why we're here. That's yeah. what we do. That's, uh, that's my case and Neil's case we've been looking into. Okay. Um, we're not here by mistake. Yeah. Okay? Um, and I want you to, you've been. To this point, I feel like you've been very straightforward and yeah. very honest. Yeah. And we really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're fixing to kind of cross over the line here where you're going to start understanding the case and okay. what we're looking for and that okay. kind of thing. Okay. I just want to encourage you to front, continue to be open with smiles. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're all human beings here and things happen. You know? mm -hmm. We just need to be the finer of facts, just like I said before. This can sound kind of corny like you're doing TV. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of all we need to do. We just need to figure out what happened. Um, pretty much everything I've asked you to this point, I have know the answer to. Okay. That's what we do. Okay. We've done, we've checked on everything that you've told us. We knew, we knew, you know, where your family was at. You know, we knew that you graduated high school. We knew you had a 17 year old son. We knew you divorced. We knew your life worked at the Rough River. Okay. You know, we knew all that. Okay. And the reason we do all that is it's important to establish something of a baseline with you so that we'll know if you're a truthful or honest person. Okay. Okay. Um, we know you've been dealing with Sherry. You say she's been a close friend, supporter mm -hmm. of you, and I'll question that for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but I kind of feel like the relationship might have been a little more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, before you start shaking your head and, and telling me no, um, you have to understand how many people we've spoken to. Okay. Okay. And how many video surveillance tapes we've looked at. Okay. okay. How many financial records we've looked at. Okay. Um, and you have to understand the kind of evidence that we're taking away from the crime scene when Mr. Engel was killed. Okay. And like I said, we're not here for, for no reason. All right. Um, you drove your truck down to the beach. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. You left on April 7th for this most recent visit. I do. Okay. Got you. you arrived. Uh, Either early morning hours or turn your phone on for the first time early morning hours on April 8th. Okay. And you checked into the value place. Okay. And you stayed there before March. You stayed there roughly about the same amount of time. March as you did in April. I oh, did. Okay. okay. Roughly about the same. Okay. Um, when you checked out, you were paid up until May 6th, which is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But you went ahead and checked out anyway. Mm -hmm. You came on home. Mm -hmm. um, you gave them instruction on how to send your security deposit back to you and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. um, the folks there, some of them had even had conversations with you at mm -hmm. some point. We've got statements from them about those conversations and what they're about. Uh, we've gone through their sec the security surveillance system, got some video footage of you. Mm -hmm. And on that video footage of Sherry, Sherry's there as well. Mm -hmm. She okay. came to visit, yeah. Okay. 
Um, on that video footage, and those, the, uh, the staff members there, they said they've seen you guys hugging and kissing and that kind of thing. Yeah, oh. we hugged and kissed, yeah. No, I mean, not like that. But well, yeah. that's, that's not the way they explained it. The way they explained it, you guys were pretty much passionately embraced to the point where they thought they were going to have to ask you to get on up to your room before something happened in the hallway. Oh, gosh. They probably looked that way because she was helping me. She was helping you? How did she just do about hugging and just, kissing? Because that's what I needed. Okay. Come on, my team. What you're starting to do is you're starting to turn off to the left here. You're doing just great. You're going straight ahead. You're, and you're starting to veer off course. Hang on now. Okay. I know the answers to the questions I'm going to ask you. Okay. 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 You're not going to shoot me a line on this stuff. I know. Okay. Uh -huh. You knew, you've already stated in this conversation earlier, that she was a married woman. Okay? Yes. And you've been seen in public. Yeah. Kissing her and hugging her. Yeah. And hang on. In a manner that a normal person watching you would feel like you guys were romantically involved. And that's not all I've got. That's just where we're starting. Okay. okay. So think long and hard about this. Uh -huh. What kind of relationship do you have with her? She helps me out. She's a big good friend. I mean, I do really care for her a lot. You know, if she I had does a, give me a hug and stuff and kiss every now and then, you know, just how about the up. time you guys were saw hugging and kissing together in the parking lot of the hospital in Louisville? Back last summer, the end of last summer. Where did your cell phone come from? Uh, in Louisville. Who paid for it? I think I did. You did? I think I did. I can't remember. I really don't remember. I think I did, but I don't remember. You paid for it cash or a card? I don't have a credit card. You don't have a debit card or like a Mac card? I had a debit card at one time, yes, I did. I may have used it. I don't remember. It's been so long ago. Okay. Well, I, I think you got a pretty tight relationship going with Sherry. Yeah, she's a good thing. I think you guys have been pretty thick. Uh, I think both of you have gone through some tough stuff. Yeah, uh, she's had some rough times too. What she said, she she's had rough, rough times about it. Oh gosh, she she kind of knows about the cheating part, like that I went through. How does she know? I mean, she just knows your situation, or she she's experienced something like that herself. Yeah, she's experienced stuff like that too. Where her husbands that? and stuff. Her the past husbands and everything used to beat her and 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 treat her bad, and you know and. And I mean, she's. What do you What are you asking? I mean, I don't know what to say. Anything you know in regard to you know why she would have knowledge of that particular kind of behavior? But she seemed to know all about everything that I was going through all the time. You know? She didn't really specifically explain why. She just kind of. I didn't ever ask her any questions because I never wanted to push stuff very much. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't know what to ask. Right. Uh, she just, as I was going through, the, all right, you wanted to know about. Well, what I want to know is the truth. I don't think you're being quite 100% no. truthful. What with part you. of the truth? You the part about you and her relationship and you and her you know, hugging and kissing. Now, if you saw me in the hallway with a woman hugging and kissing, what would you think? You'd think we had some sort of relationship. That's why we didn't say much to anybody. Well, you didn't say much to anybody because she was married and she right. was cheating on her husband with you. No. That's why you didn't say anything. It wasn't cheating. Well, you basically already admitted that, Timmy. Come on, don't minimize it. You've already admitted she that you guys are hugging and kissing, and that's cheating because she's married, right? Well, I mean, if you look at if you look at the hugging and kissing, well, part, that's really that's the only way you can look at it, sir. You can't really eat your cake, cake and have it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? A it either is or it isn't. A conversation we had last night. We were sitting on the porch shop. Well, see, I think you've had a lot of conversations, and I yeah. think she's filled your head with all kinds of stuff to stay. And you're trying to stick with the story that you've established with. No, uh, this is the truth. This is every step that goes through. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, the conversation we had last night, and I was telling her, I said, I really need a hug. You know, she said, I got too much to go on right now. And I said, I was talking about Bobby, you know. She, actually, she told me, she said, well, you know, Bobby can just... If you need help, Bobby can just talk to him, you know, about your problems and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll he'll come up and give you a hug. And I just kind of feel alone. And that's what I told her, you know, I just really feel alone. And she's a good hearted person. You know, she would she's a compassionate person. Bobby, you're a good guy, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. I think there's more to it than that. I don't think you and her have a physical relationship like boy and girl, boyfriend, girlfriend. Come I do on, care for her. Yes. I know you care for her. And, and, and even to even more solidify that point, we've heard that you guys have slipped off somewhere and gotten married. 
No. How come you were wearing a wedding ring? She gave me that ring just to keep on my <laughs> finger because of, it just helps because I've been married for 20 years. Well, how about the fact that the people in this area have only seen Timmy Rogers pop up whenever Sherry Engel was in town? How about that? Yeah. I suppose you had a relationship with her and still do. Because I follow her. We stay together. Right. She's just kind of been a guardian angel to me. So right. I just kind of hold on to her friendship. She's the only person I've got. Well, let, let, let me break it down more, a little more simply. Okay. Okay. And you've been seen in public with her, hugging and kissing. She took you to Myrtle Beach. You know, you say that she, you live in the same place she's living right now, but right immediately after her husband was just murdered. Yeah. Now start thinking about these things. I mean, well, hang on. Think about if we're sitting in that courtroom out there and we're presenting these facts to 12 people, a jury of your peers, what are they going to start thinking? I know. They would think the opposite thing. Yeah, yeah. We know that too. That's why yeah. we're here. They're going to start thinking, well, Timmy had to have something to do with this. Yeah. And that's why Timmy's here today. So how, do I, how do I explain? You don't that explain it's not it. Anymore. You don't explain it. You tell the truth. That's what I've been doing. I don't, I don't think you are. I think you're doing a little bit of minimization. And that, that's common. That's what people do. When you feel like your feet to the fire. That's always been my problem. I can't get out what I want to say. Well, you said, you said a lot. Question, you said so quite a bit. You know? Ask me. You said a lot of stuff. Okay. You, you, you told us a lot of truth. But now as we start to get to the stuff where there's a little more tension, a little more stress, you're starting to sway off from the middle here. Because I'm worried. I would be worried too. Yeah. You know, there, there's a very serious reason why we're here today. There's a lot of consequences involved with it. Yeah. You know, let me tell you something else on that. I know every phone call you've ever placed on that cell phone. I know every phone call you've ever received on that cell phone. Okay. And you talking to Sherry once a day is a lie. There's days that you talk to her as many as 20 times. Oh, no, no, at least once a day. Oh, no, that's not what you said earlier. See, yeah, I left it out. I know you I left did, it out I because did. that was convenient at the moment. You no. didn't want me to know how often you talked with no. her, what kind of relationship you had with her. No. You wanted me to think you guys are just casual prayer buddies, and that's not the case at all. You no. guys are boyfriend and girlfriend and have been for a while. She, I've got two. I've got people in Kentucky. I've got people in South Carolina. I've got people in between that have seen you two together behaving like a couple. Okay? That's not coincidence, sir. Not coincidence at all. You've got to decide right now whether you're going to get on board with telling us exactly what the deal is on this. you got to tell us, Tim. Because yeah. we, look now. We ain't here to rub you down and, and, and push you down. We've got to find the truth and we've got to do the best thing we can to help you I know do the best you can in the situation. Yes. Let me tell you, brother, at this minute, I can put you in jail for the rest of your life. And that's only the good part. There's more to it that can even be done about that. You know what that might be? You know what happens to people that murder other people? Well, usually they go to prison for life or something. But there's other options too. Definitely. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. Oh, gosh. They do that in South Carolina. Oh, gosh. And at this point, I'm sitting on a mound. You know what this is? This is a mound of information that says that Timmy Rogers killed Fred Engel. Oh, gosh. And you know what else? You know where Sherry's at right now? Where? She's at another facility. She's talking to another team of investigators in Horry County Police Department. Okay. Just imagine what she's saying. Probably the same thing I am. I don't think she is. We've already talked with them. Before you even got here, they had her at the jail talking with her. If she tells the truth, I mean, that's what this... Ooh. I don't believe you, buddy. What was it you asked me a minute ago? You said I left it out. Uh, I, I, asked, to I specifically yeah. asked you yeah. how often you talk with her. You said once a day. At least you didn't, no, day. sir, that's not I, what no, you no, said. I know I didn't say that, but okay. that's what I mean. No, it's easy I to go back and start patching holes after after he gets punched in your story. Okay. you got to get it right the first time. And you got to understand what's at stake here. Okay, okay? I didn't mean to leave that way. I just... That's me. Well, well, you didn't mean to because you didn't think I knew. And now that I do, you want to back up and try to make out like you volunteered that information. That's not what happened at all. I wish you knew me. Because I, I can't. Well, you know something? About, I know more about you than you think you do. I know you're a good person. Okay. I also know that Sherry probably put you up to this. I know that she probably suggested that this happened. She said something about all the financial gain that she'd have if this happened. How she supports you. How y'all would have a life together and build a house. I know this stuff. Oh, good Lord. You gonna get on board with us? I'm on board. You what sure? do you want? Yes. You drove your truck to Myrtle Beach. Yes. Okay. At that time, it's still red. Yes. Okay. You drove it into the Berkshire Forest subdivision. You know what? I've got people that saw your truck there. Okay. I've got people that saw your truck driving into that neighborhood with the headlights off. Now, who goes to a neighborhood 
that they've never been before and turns their headlights off and sneaks down to the end of the street and backs up across from the mailbox station. Timmy Rogers does, because I've got a lady that's going to sit on the stand and swear on the Bible and raise her right hand that saw you. Bet you didn't know how that did. I don't. I didn't drive into no subdivision with my headlights off or nothing. Oh, you didn't? No. Why didn't you? What did you do? How did it happen? How did? Uh, how did what happen? The murder of Fred Ingram. I don't know. I think you do, Tim. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Yes. Not only did we have a witness putting your truck in that area at the same time, uh -huh. they saw you. They got out. They were concerned about you. They could see you in that truck. Okay. You also, like, take the calls to saying, we're monitoring your phone. Okay. We've okay. gone back and looked at it. Okay. We can tell not only every time you made a call and who you talk to, but where you're sitting when you do that. Okay. okay. Whether you're aware of it or not, when you pick up a cell phone, it seeks the closest tower. Mm -hmm. At the time that Fred was killed, you were making calls sitting right there in that parking lot because we can put you at a tower right there. Give me. Don't shake your head, sir. I've got it on paper. Okay. I don't let, me, let, me, let me make sure you understand this, okay? okay? This is the cell phone tower where you made all your phone calls when you were at the value place. Okay. That's how I know you stayed there because I found it myself. Okay. okay. That's the cell phone tower, that camera, uh -huh. that is closest to the crime scene where Fred Engel was murdered. Okay. okay. You made the majority of your telephone calls using that tower because that's the closest one to you and that's the way a cell phone works, okay? All of a sudden, just out of the clear blue sky, just before Fred Engel was to be murdered, all of a sudden your cell phone starts showing up in this area right here with this cell phone tower, okay? okay. Right before Mr. Engel was murdered, you received a call from Sherry. A few minutes later after that, you made a call to Sherry, okay? This isn't questionable. This is fact. What? Hang on. Okay. I'm telling. I'm trying to make sure you understand this. Okay. okay. Whenever you received the call from Sherry, you were sitting in her neighborhood at the end of Balmore Drive, across from the mailbox station. Okay. You received a call. She said, "Hey, he's on the way out the house to the mailbox station." Okay. Once that call was completed, you got out of your truck. You met Fred in the mailbox station. You heard because that's what you were there to do. And that's what you planned to do. As soon as that was over, you got back in your truck and you left this area right here. You drove all the way back to the Value Place and you called Sherry from the cell phone tower at Value Place. Different tower. It told where you are. Totally different. We can triangulate you down to within about 10 yards, sir. And the time it took you from one call to another and where you were. Okay. you okay. got to understand this. And the, point, the, the other aspect that you've got to understand is now is where you choose how the people in that jury box are going to portray Timmy Rogers. Okay. 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 They can think, well, these detectives have got it all here laid out. There's no question about it. He had the opportunity to say, yeah, I did it. This is what happened. It was her idea. It was my idea. We did it for money, whatever the reason being. Yes. But it happened. Accidents happen. Good people do bad things and there are a lot of stress. There's people that are very influential in this world. And Sherry's one of them. I know. I've dealt with them. Okay. Now's the point where you've got to decide that you're going to tell us the truth exactly what happened yeah. to try to help Timmy Rogers down the road because if this videotape is played for a jury of your peers okay. they're not going to feel very fondly of it okay because you have the opportunity right now we've got a mountain of evidence I've already explained it to you okay what do you want to know I want to know why you killed him first of all he did I don't know Mr. Rogers, the question is not whether you did, it's whether she paid you up front, whether you get into something later, whether it's because you loved her, whatever the thing. Because if you were her best friend, yeah. first of all, the people that are walking the hallway at the hotel, that passionate kiss you're talking about was not a friendship kiss with tongues down each other's throat. They adamantly sat there, they've given it on tape as to how each other's tongues were in each other's mouth. Okay, that's not one of a friend who's helping another one out to Bible study. It's, There's it's, more. It's different okay? with us. The yeah. hotel people can tell how long she was in your room. Okay, and when she left, the video's going to show. Okay, those times are kind of odd. Okay. If you're her best friend, she's your best friend getting through times, you're in Myrtle Beach at the time of the funeral. I was there. You weren't there. Why weren't you there for? You didn't want to be seen because no, what? Because she didn't think that I should be there. You're a friend. Why shouldn't you be there? That's because you're a boyfriend. Your boyfriend don't usually go to the funeral of your husband. Because it is bad. Exactly. Because yeah. you're a boyfriend. Not a boyfriend. Look, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's, it's a duck. Brother. I can tell you, it's a duck. You yeah. didn't go to the funeral because people had already seen you hugging. The hotel staff had seen you hugging her. 
kissing her. Yeah. There's more to it. If it's already in your mind, what do you think is in ours? What do you think is going to be in the jury's? Know, that's what you did. Always thinks okay. The question, there is no doubt. Put yourself in the jury box. You're listening to this case, okay? And we come up, someone's swearing, they've seen your truck. Our guys are out there. So what if you painted it? They're scratching it off. They're getting the true color of what it was. Right. That person's going to be able to say, yeah, that's the color of it. Okay. okay. We can put you there. We can put you on that cell phone tower at the time of Mr. Fred died. Okay. Put you back at the motel calling afterwards. All the inconsistencies in her story, plus whatever she's telling now. The thing you've got to understand is we can't make promises. Neither one of us can. Okay. Right. But we can tell you, just like he said, we're a finder of the facts. We go to the courts and we present those facts. And somebody that's willing to cooperate, it's likely to get a better shot than the one that's not. Okay. Okay. She's the one that puts you up to it. She's the one that said, let's go kill him. Okay. Why take all the fall for it and let her walk away? She's just as guilty. She's now, did she pay you? I don't understand. Look, she does have a problem as far as forgetting what she says and everything. Or she'll, she'll say stuff and then she'll forget what she says. I don't understand where that comes into play. <laughs> Because she takes a lot of medications and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Where it comes into play. Uh, well, you said that you she, you thought she tried to coerce me into doing this. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's something. Let's see you're making a hands on the table. Palm back. You left handed, right? Yes. Okay. Two my fingernails like crazy. Yeah. Well, people are nervous about stuff like this usually do. No. That is not the gift of someone who just gives that to a friend. That's a wedding band. Yeah, it's a wedding band. Mm -hmm. But it, it was given to you by Sherry. I always Hinkley. figured. I'll leave my I always That's figured. Like you can back. That's okay. right. I always figured that she just gave it to me just to kind of help me get through because I was married for 20 years. I think it was part of the payoff. I think she paid me to kill her husband. <sighs> And there ain't no doubt about you killing him. I mean, we've established that. That's what we've been doing for the last 20 minutes. The biggest issue is why. Did she pay? Did she promise you all this money from life insurance policy? Did she promise you she's going to buy you a house? Did she promise you a new truck? Did she give you cash money? She gave me some cash money before, you know, for helping with... I don't understand. Do you ever make for it? No. Why not? Never had a chance. So we were, you know, we well, you lived in, you were in Myrtle Beach for about six weeks over the course of the last two months. I yeah. think that's a pretty good opportunity. Well, the woman who's your rock, your salvation, your angel, it's the person she lives with. Did you ever go over there? No, yeah. because it would look bad. Exactly, because you're her boyfriend. That's the part that I'm trying to explain. It, it doesn't that, that look right. Let me explain, sir. So your best friend, have you come to the beach all this way? It's a long way because we drove from there here, so we know it's just yeah. a reverse trip. Yeah. You sat in a motel when you weren't applying for a job, is what you said. You just sat there. So you your best it. friend, rather than letting you come over and eat dinner with her and Fred, rather than knowing that you're depressed, you're out of town, there's, there's no one around who you know, you don't to sit in the motel room and chew your nails. She's going to let you do that. She would tell me I'd have to, I have to get over it. I have to deal my own life. I have to... Same person that gives you a wedding man until she got to deal with their own life, but she brings you. Well, no, not the same person that's saying kissing and tongue kissing in the hallway and hugging here and also up in the room. You didn't say it right. Oh, uh, well, that's not got anything to do with what you're saying. It's what we're saying because we know it's fact. Okay. okay? That's going to keep coming up. You're not going to be able to say anything to change that because that's what happened. Okay. You've got to perceive the way these things are going to look. If you saw me in an embrace and tongue kissing somebody in the hallway, the first thing you're gonna think is their boyfriend or girlfriend or they're married, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The woman gives you a gift that we've all agreed is a wedding band, mm -hmm. okay? Getting deeper and deeper, sir. Those are things that you're not going to be able to reflect, phrase what you've already said and explain. Right, right? because okay. that's the way it happened. Did you see some other officers at Bobby's house when they brought yeah. you here? What we're doing is executing a search warrant at the house okay when you go to a crime no matter how much you clean up you still leave something okay, okay? or you take something okay it could be either way you could take something of Fred's whether it's material things you know or bodily parts or DNA or okay. you can leave something okay they're, they're doing that okay. when we get through this interview you're going to a hospital okay okay and there's a search warrant for you and that's to collect DNA from you and that's going to help also not only the physical 
parts of the statements of witnesses coming in your truck was there, you hugging, you kissing Sherry when you're at the beach, you leaving the motel early when you're an unemployed person who's hurting for money, you leave when you've already prepaid ahead of time. You not going to the funeral. All these things are starting to combine. But once they get your DNA to match what we've collected from the crime scene, there is no getting around that. Okay. It don't look bad, sir. It looks awful. It looks horrible. Okay. Okay. Think about it for a minute. Do you understand what DNA is? Kind of, yeah. Kind of. Okay. What DNA is is every single cell in your body has got a fingerprint to it. You okay. obviously know what a fingerprint is and how it works. Yeah. Any one of those cells that are left behind, we could send it to a lab. And that lab can tell us who it belongs to. Okay. We got DNA off Mr. Fred Engel's body. Okay. It wasn't his. It wasn't Sherry's. I think it's going to be yours. Once we get that blood evidence back from the hospital, there's going to be no doubt in the Okay. You just, you just gave yourself up right there. Okay. Instead of saying, couldn't have been mine, you just shrugged your shoulders. It could be yours if it's on there. Once it's, once it really comes out, I'll be all right. So yeah. that's figuring out. Okay. You said it wasn't you because your lights. You didn't say you weren't in that development. It's kind of like what I said about you nodded or shrugged just then. Is when he said you went to the development, but your headlights are off. You know, my headlights wouldn't have been off. So you were there, but your lights were on. Is that what you were saying? No, I was saying I wouldn't be driving around anywhere with my headlights off. Okay. But have you ever been to Sherry and Fred's house? I have been by there, yes. Okay. When were you by there? Oh, gosh. She asked me to bring her a piece of plastic to cover her flowers up because it was going to frost one night. When was that? Okay, I don't know. Uh, a month ago, three weeks, I don't know, something like that. It was, what it was time of night soon. was that? Oh, it wasn't at night, it was during the day. So you've never been there or not? That car, because we've got your truck there. I'm trying to figure out a reason why. It's not a question of where you think it was late in. afternoon or something. No, this isn't, this isn't something that can be confused for late afternoon. This is nighttime. No okay. question about it. Okay. You were either there or you weren't. Okay. Have you been in there to her house at night? Not at night. Okay. You see, the best thing is when you tell the truth, the truth is always the same. You've told stories in here that have already caught you in lines. It's like you painted your truck two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Well, you came back here a week ago. You haven't been and here for two weeks. The hotel staff said that you had the truck in that same color as it was before you primed it. You haven't been here two weeks. No, and why all of a sudden to come paint your truck? I mean, my understanding it looked better when it was the red or burgundy than it does with the primer gray. Mm -hmm. You were trying to hide something because your truck had been seen. You knew you were seen in that neighborhood. You also knew that there was a state trooper that likely saw you. Because you flipped out, you drove by, and the state trooper was doing a traffic stop, and you slowed down to the point the car almost drove around you because it freaked you out so bad. You see this camera right here? Uh huh. You know that there's one of those in every South Carolina Highway Patrol cars, and it films when a car is being stopped? Okay. You know that when cars pass, it's catching a wide spectrum, so it catches all that? Okay. You don't think your car's on, or your truck's on that tape when that car is being stopped? I don't know. When it'll go by one. You don't know. You know where you've been, sir. There's no question about that. You know where you've been. So do we. That's the thing why we're trying to establish. I'm trying to give you an out. I'm trying to get you to, to admit that what's going on. We've got the tape. You're trying to pass the car. Do you, you remember passing the trooper stopping a car on the road going to Sherry's house? One time when you The day out. that I went, I don't know. I don't remember. Is that the day you took the plastic? I, I don't remember passing any trooper or nothing like that when I took Well, I mean, you went from doing a normal speed limit to slowing to about a crawl. The speed limit is 35, You're 45. You slow down whenever you pass But when you passed it, you continued. You did 10, 20 miles per hour or something like that. You were barely moving. You turned left on all of Augusta Plantation Road. You went on into subdivision. You know why? Because the lady that saw you there was right behind you in your car, her car, in your truck. There, there ain't no shaking your head because this lady saw you there. Okay. That's not a question. It's not a debatable issue. It's a fact. Okay. She saw you pull in with your headlights off to the end of the road and back up across from the mailbox station. She saw it. I don't understand. She was worried because it was so suspicious. She almost called the police at that point. Whatever Sherry but promised you. But she saw it wasn't me. I don't was. understand that. It was. It was your truck. The same time she said it, you think back on that jury pool again. Yes. Same time she's putting your truck there, describing it, 
We can prove you were there because your cell phone's making calls off the tower right there. Did you lose your phone? Has anybody had it during that no, time? Not to, no. So when you went to Myrtle Beach, you had. Before, but I've never, I've when you went to Myrtle Beach, you had a cell phone. Yes. What was that number? Uh, uh, Presently, still have that phone? Yes. Okay. Have you lost it any time between the first one and Myrtle Beach? Did you loan it to anybody? No. Okay, then you had to have had it and be bouncing off that tower at Fred's house that night. You yourself just said no one else had your phone. We know for a fact right. that it was it was normally hitting off the tower at the motel, but that it was also this night hitting off the tower at Fred and Sherry's house. How do you explain that? I don't know how. I don't know what was someone. Happening. So this jury, this jury, when you get up there and you put your hand up, it's time for you to swear in. What's your story? Someone broke into my motel room while I wasn't no, aware of it. Because I got my keys from my truck, drove my truck to Sherry's house, used my phone, drove it back, and put the phone back in my room and the keys. No, because that's absurd. It is. Yeah. Okay. Your truck, your phone were there. No one broke in your house, your motel room. Right. So therefore, you drove it. You used the phone. What were you doing in their neighborhood? The only time I went was to take her a piece of plastic. Okay, so you took the plastic in flowers. there the night that he died. No, it was not nighttime. That's the night your truck was It in. was not nighttime. It was day to day. I don't remember if it was morning or afternoon. This, this lady that's a neighbor down there, she's going to come out of all the vehicles in the United States and come up with one matching yours, matching your description, and we're going to go and get the cell phone tower records and bounce off. That's not logical. It doesn't explain itself. I don't know what to say. The truth? I don't It is. Whatever Sherry promised you is not going to be any good because you're going to be in prison and can't spend it. And then stays this way. Who knows? She may be free and clear. You love her that much. You're going to let her get you into trouble, in a prison for the rest of your life, and she's going to walk away free? Did you kill him because you wanted to be with her? Be no. your husband to have a relationship with her? I didn't do that. Why are you asking me that? We can explain to you why we're asking you that. How did, how did he die? They said he was beaten. Who said? Uh, Chris, one of the family members. Sherry didn't describe how? This is, you're there for the hard times for her like she is for you. She didn't sit there and tell you how Fred was killed? She just said he was murdered. She didn't elaborate? I didn't ask. Because I didn't want to push. She was in bad shape and stuff. I didn't want to keep asking and pushing and bother. You know, I didn't know. I, I've always felt like that. Have you had of, your tongue down her throat since then? No. Are you going to wait for a little cool off time so people don't see you? No, together? because she's in bad, bad shape right now. I saw at the funeral. She was laughing. She looked fine to us. Okay. I'm seeing too. We've got pictures that were just a grin and laughing. At the funeral of her husband. At any time, that's the time you're emotional, you're upset, you're seeing she's laughing and giggling. She didn't have a care in the world. You're the one that's going to take the fall for it. You're the one taking the fall. Sit there and think about it. I am thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It's scary. We're going to strip you of everything when okay. you leave here. Don't take that ring from it. That's evidence. Okay. Okay. That jury's thinking that wasn't just a token of $100. She gave me this too. Nicholas. Don't take that. How long ago was that? Oh, gosh. Uh, gosh, almost a year, I guess. Circular stuff like that, symbols of people in relationships, marriages, things like that. It was just something to remind me of her because I needed a friend. How'd she put that ring on your finger? When I was in communicare. She you brought it to me when I was in communicare. Did you have any type of service? Anything, friendship service, anything like that? No. When I was in the community care in E-Town, she came to visit me one time and she brought me the ring. Didn't say anything, just gave you a ring? Uh, just, I'm gonna give you a ring, you know. It, I don't remember exactly what she said. She just gave it to me. It's pretty, it was close to my birthday too. What did you give her? I got her a card. What was the occasion? Just a friendship card. I mean, I felt like I needed to give her something too. She gave me something. You, know? you didn't give her a ring yourself? No. Why are so many people in there saying you two got married at some point in the last while? I don't know. You haven't said that to anyone? 
All right. When we first, when I was going through the stuff with my wife, we this is what makes it look better, okay? Well, no, hang on now. What makes it look bad is you've been seen in public kissing and hugging on a married woman, her paying your way to Myrtle Beach, her paying for your room, her giving you gifts, you know, and that's what looks bad. And that's not anything that you're going to go backwards on and change what you think you said. We made it look like we were married at one time. That's what I'm thinking. And why did you now. do that? Because my wife, ex-wife, was kind of going crazy and and just kind of wanted to get back at her, really, mm -hmm. for what she did to me. With a married woman, you did that to make your it wife. Was just, it was just a... How do you think Mr. Engel felt about that? I didn't think he knew. How did you feel about it? Well, at the time, I didn't know she was married. You didn't know she was married? I didn't know she was married until later. How? Until well, a few months. Well, see, now hang on. Now, that's the perfect thing. I like the way you said that. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Okay. She didn't tell you the truth. When you first started seeing each other and became friendly, I think you established a relationship before you even knew she was married. And that yeah, makes a lot a more bit. sense. And I thought it was now, see, more. Look, now you're holding that back from us. That makes a lot more sense than what we've been talking about. Okay? Yeah. I'll tell you the whole story there if you'd like to hear it. Well, I, I kind of think I know it. I mean, okay. you guys kind of both in need for whatever reason and spark a friendship up that rapidly turns into something else. So you've got a relationship formed. And she wasn't truthful with you. Yeah, I was confused at first. Exactly. But then I understood. She's a married woman. Yeah. And at this point, you're so far into it, you've got feelings for her. You know, she's not terribly happy or satisfied with the situation she's got. And Lord knows you're not, you know. So things yeah, develop beyond where they should be to the point where you're seen in public hugging and kissing and making out to the point where they're about to ask you to leave. So you got so hot and heavy and all that. I don't think so. I don't see Well, I know that. what they're saying. You know, so I, I have to go with what they're saying because they saw it with their own eyes. These are the employees of where you were staying at. Yeah. Okay? That see that makes a whole lot more sense. See how easy that is? She didn't tell you the truth. She led you along, she drove you into a relationship, and there you were. Then you found out she's married. Uh-huh. Not the relationship, just as we were becoming friends and stuff, and she would say she said, Well, I'll tell you I'm married. Uh, and when did she tell you that? Oh, a couple of months after we met. So that would have been, oh gosh, April, May of last year, because you said you met her somewhere around the winter of last year. You know her about a year and four months. We met, okay, it was, the leaves are so, it was probably the early part of 2007, January, February, March, April, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, after we met, then I thought it was going to be, you know, because I asked her out. I did ask mm -hmm. her out. Cool. No problem with that, because you didn't know all the facts. Right. That's the way things work sometimes. Right, right. And she went out with you. Yeah. We Where did you guys go? Oh, gosh. We just went to Rough River. Yeah, the, the logs? No, down to the to the, uh, the restaurant. Uh, boat land. No, the, where the water comes out of the dam. The just falls. to sit, yeah, <laughs> the, the out, whatever, just to sit and talk. Yeah, did you guys go to dinner or anything like that? Oh gosh, we've been at the dinner. Well, I mean, this particular incident. I mean, no. you said you asked her out, so it'd be more I went and got a pizza. It's kind of like a day. I went and got a pizza. I yeah. that sounds nice. Yeah. Well, man, I like that. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you guys get a pizza. Yeah. You go down to the falls. Yeah. Um, and we sit and talk and I tell her about all the stuff that was going on and stuff right. and she was really compassionate and everything and uh -huh. I really started caring for her a lot. Yeah, I can tell you, you know, see it. Now that and, makes perfect sense. Yeah. You know, that's logical. Okay. That's what we're talking about. And then and then I always thought, you know, we were gonna have a relationship, but then she told me she was married and I thought, well it's how long after that did she tell you she was married? A couple months, I guess. How many more dates did you have? We didn't have any dates. From then on it became like I'm supposed to be leading my own life, and she's helping me along. No, I mean, you, you said that you, you 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 asked her out, and you went out. Yes. Okay. Then it was a couple of months after that you found she was married. So in that couple of months, you guys had to have seen each other at some point. We did see each other. Okay, well, those were not days. Oh, well, okay. those are days. Okay, we get back into that people seeing you in the hallway, okay. and that's what couples do. I take it too literal sometimes. I'm okay. Sorry. Okay. Well, you might not have said, let's go out on a date, but that's what you would do. Okay. So what were the other incidents like when you guys got together until you found out that she was married? We would go to dinners, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes. Uh, 
Uh, we would we would sit on the side of the road and talk. Mm -hmm. You know, go to the parking lot, and talk, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, any physical contact? Any kind of sexual relations? Not sexual, just hugs and kisses and stuff like that. I don't think I believe you. People don't go park and just hug and kiss when they're adults like yes. this. If, if at that point you don't know that she's married, why aren't you asking? Why can't we meet somewhere other than the side of the road and in a parking lot? She was always busy. That wasn't suspicious to you. I always wondered, you know. But after she said she was working, she would, she would fly to, God, where'd she fly to? She flew to different places, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, you and Fred have something in common other than Sherry? Not that I know of. Pizza. Okay. Your first date, you had pizza sitting on the side of the road. His last meal was pizza, hugged up with her and acting like kids laying on a bed. Just before you killed him. You do know, Ken. You just got to decide that it's worth telling the truth about. I am telling you everything I know. No, sir, you're not. Well, ask me more, because yeah. I don't know what to say. We're, we're at the point where we're virtually running out of questions here, because we know what happened. We just can't convince you of the importance of telling us the truth. Okay. If we know you killed him. How do you know that? Witnesses, evidence, the DNA that's going to complete our tests. We've already done um, hers, Sherry's. It's not down there. But there's an unknown. That unknown is going to be yours. There is no denying it. When they come back and they say one and I don't know how many, I'm not a chemist and I'm not about to, don't quote me on this, say one in 250 billion. That's some hell of an odds. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How do you get out of that? And we know it's you because we've got a witness with you, your truck, the cell phone with your tower. You sit here and deny it. The sad thing that happens is a lot of people sit in denial when they're sitting here talking to us, and you sit in jail, and you wait for your bond hearing. As time goes on, then you say, well, maybe I should have told the truth. Well, by then, all the attorneys, all the prosecutors who put all this work into it, they don't want to hear you, okay? okay. Is Sherry's already escaped and gone and found her another man, giving him another friendship ring, and you're sitting in there paying the price for her. Because... Whenever know, unless I'm put a call in, I'm waiting, I hate to interrupt them, but I've called the other detectives and they won't answer, that's understandable. Okay. But there's a reason for that. Probably doing pretty good with Sherry right now. If you've seen me, I tried a couple of times. Okay. You know, waiting on a call from them, they probably say what we need, if so we pack up, we don't need your statement, we'll have hers telling us she knows, yes, she called you. Yes, she talked to you before and after his death. You told her, hey, it's done, you're gone, okay. Just a, a reasonable person, okay, is all we're asking for on a jury. Yes. Someone with, and I'm not taking anything from you, just someone with common sense that is sit there and listen to this case, okay? okay? The case is like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay. You ever done jigsaw puzzles? Yeah. You put the outside together and start working yourself in, correct? Yeah. You put the last one in. Yeah. What do you do with that puzzle? What, what, what do I do with the puzzle? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Have you ever crumbled up, put it back in the box oh, and do it well, another day? Have you ever framed it, put it up? You're proud of it? We, me and my son just worked them before. Okay. Each case to us is like a puzzle and okay. we're putting the pieces. Right now we're waiting to see that last piece to put in that puzzle. Okay. That's a puzzle of Fred's face, okay? Okay. Are you going to put that last piece in there or is Sherry? Because if not, DNA, the labs will put it in there for us. We're, we're going to complete it, okay? And we're going to learn by it. Okay. And we're going to take that puzzle to court. Everybody's going to be able to see it. Okay. You had a part in it. Help us complete it. You had a big part in it. You've already done most of the work. You've already killed them. You've already done the frame of this puzzle. And every time you jump back, it's not an amazement. It's not a shock. You know what happened. Your truck's there. You were there. We got witnesses. We got cell tower records. We got your phone records. The same phone that you had going to Myrtle Beach, the same phone that you brought back, the same phone that our officers have in their hands as we speak. Uh -huh. Okay? Didn't go in anybody else's hands. Tell me the good news on that interview. We're in the middle of this one. We want to know how Sherry's interview is going. Okay, so she's done good. No problems. She's coming. Okay. Get, getting what you need. Okay. Okay, that's good to hear. All right, thanks. Come on. Okay. She's, she's, a little, she's been a little more forthright on the other end than you are. Okay. 
I don't, I tell you, I don't I, know all the facts, but they're saying that we're pretty much along with what we came up here believing. So what does that tell you? I don't know. And we sat here and told you what we believe. We believe that this is based on your lust, your love, whatever it is for Sherry, that this was done either for money or for love, mm -hmm. that your hand was in on it. We've got witnesses. Mm -hmm. And that was the other team that's sitting there talking to her. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Say I'm sorry. Something. I don't know what to say. I didn't do nothing wrong. Other than how do you, how do you explain? Like let's go back over. Okay. You're a Myrtle Beach. Yes. And I hate to be repetitive. Okay. You're there. You're hurting for money. You actually you're looking for a job for money. So you're looking, just giving me money. Sometimes. Okay. You're looking for a job. Yes. You, you've gone down there seeking employment. I'm worried about for your best that? friend who's asked you to come down there. Yes. You don't visit her. You don't go out to eat with her, she but she comes come to you. Yes. Okay. You go to her house to take her plastic. Was Fred there? I don't know. I you, really did don't you know. ring the doorbell? Did you call her while you were there? No, I didn't did see. Did you knock on the door? Said. She was. She said, "Bring it up." She had the garage door up when I pulled up there, and I backed into the garage door and brought in the plastic. Went out on the back porch. Did you back your car in the garage? No, in the driveway. Okay. And went around to the back porch, put the plastic over the flyers and stuff, and that was it. That's why Fred, you well. knew Fred was out of country, out of town, right? I didn't see him there, I didn't know. You knew that she he was out of town, she, she told you nothing. Why else you said that? I assumed he wasn't there because she told me to come over. You said it's not right for you to go there, so you... I assumed that she, he wasn't there is why she called me to come you know, over. You know what Fred looks like? I've seen pictures of it. a picture. How'd you see a picture? At the at their place out there at Bobby's. She didn't bring you one to the motel to show you? No. Didn't see one, but is that your purpose of going to the house to look at a picture in the house? No. But I guess you really don't need to look at a picture because when you're out of the mailbox between 10, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, there's not a lot of people going out there, so it's obvious which one's walking out there and which one you got killed, right? Why are you asking me stuff like that? Because we know that's what happened, okay? We're not here to pat ourselves on the back, but we've got evidence to support that. And we're going to go to court, okay? We don't know, that jury we keep speaking of, we don't know who's going to be there. Because we don't know if this case is a year from now, or two years from now, three years, whatever. We've got some cases that come quick, some that don't, depending on what we're waiting on as far as evidence, okay? okay. Lab work and things like that. Okay. Don't know who the jury is. Don't know who the judge is. Okay. Don't know who the attorneys are. I'm not trying to be funny. Don't have a crystal ball. But based on past experiences and looking at the case, looking at the evidence, and looking at the witnesses, we have to provide. We don't think we have any problem to find you guilty. I know that's what okay. makes worries me because it looks today on bad. It should worry you, Timmy. It is bad. It don't just look bad. It is bad. You even talked to the hotel staff. Not only did you say, "Well, they might have seen us embrace," you talked to the staff about how bad your life was at the Value Inn. Did you not? Yeah. Okay, that shows we've been talking to people. We were, yeah, there was okay. a black lady there. I, I can't remember her name. But yeah. We talked about talking. how your life sucked. Yeah. Okay. And how you were ashamed and embarrassed about some of the things you've done in your life. And that was right after he was killed. So your conscience is bothering you. No, we Now's just, the time to cleanse it. Bobby's there for cleansing. We're here for cleansing, too. Okay, you know how much better you would feel by telling the truth? I am telling. No, so you know. With the lady that I was talking to before, I told her my whole story that that I was married. I'm from a small town in Kentucky, and everything. And I hate the way everything she, was going. She said it was more than that. She could see it in your eyes. She could see from your emotions there was something eating away at you. Yeah, I mean, everything's eating away at me. Yeah, it ought to be. Yeah, I man, I'm having a hard time. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I, I'm lost. You start telling the truth about why you killed. Who talked me into it? Who paid you for it? Nobody done nothing. Who promised you things Nobody for it? Nobody done nothing. I didn't do nothing. Your phone that you got, you think you might have paid it the first time. My phone has to be paid every month. Who paid your monthly bills or when your card got low that you had to pay up again? I always bought With Where'd you get that money? But my unemployment or savings that I had. I cashed in a uh, uh, IRA thing that I had from my previous job. You knew that Sherry was retired or thought she was. What did Fred do for a living? Uh, he was a financial something or another. So you know quite a bit about Fred? Well, I hear from talking, yeah. You know quite. You know what he does, but you don't know what she does? She was the same, wasn't she? That's what she said. I'm asking you. Okay. I'm asking, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's what she told me. She was the same. She did a financial advisor, whatever, something like that. 
I mean, for being concerned and her being your best friend, staying away from there because it wasn't right, yet you know that Fred's financial person, he goes out of town, you go buy the house. That's another thing. Like he says, we know the answers to the questions beforehand, okay? We already knew you'd been to our house. Just wait for you to tell us. Neighbors seen it. Because we went back around once we found out about you and took pictures of the neighborhood. So have you ever seen this man? No. Yeah. They seen you. Huh? They seen you there. They seen you in the neighborhood. You can't answer for them. Just like you can't answer for the lady that saw you in the truck back up across from the mailbox. You just can't answer for them. What do you think she did when we took that picture of you? The lady that not only saw your truck and described it to a T, but looked at your picture. Who do you think she picked? I don't know. I don't know. Take a guess. Who do you think? What did you say? I don't know. The lady that picked your truck, described it to a T, which you look different now, okay? If we impound your car and keep it to the time of trial, you aren't going to ever need it again, is we put it up there. It's going to look a little different for the gray. But if we get some sort of chemical, which they can do to take off the gray, uh -huh. and we put it back to the original color, it will match what she described to a T, okay? The make, the model, the type, the color, everything like that. That same person, what do you think she said? when she saw the picture and we asked, was this the person driving that truck? Said. I don't know what she said. How do, you, how, do you, how do you fight that? I don't understand exactly. I mean, because if, if, if I wasn't was at a place, how can somebody say your that truck I was, was there? there? Your phone was but there. I was in their, in their, I was at their house, but I wasn't there. We're when talking, we we're talking about. different, different times. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Your truck. We haven't been able. You have, you can't explain that. Your truck never left your possession. Your phone never left it. Yet we put it there by witnesses at their mailbox. I don't know what. I don't know what to say there. I don't know the what. Truth is what you need to say. That's what I am saying. You're not. We've already gone over it. You yourself said. I don't know what your wording was, but it's virtually impossible because you had the keys to your truck. You had your cell phone in your possession. No yeah. one broke in. Your, remember when we went through that? No one went right. through the motel room. Right. You had to have had possession of those items. If they never left your side, let's, let's get this correct, okay? Here's my phone, here's my keys. Okay, stay with me. Yes. We can put that vehicle that belongs to that over at Fred's house. We can put that phone there. If they never left your side, that means you're over here with them. When, when you can put my truck there when I took the plastic to it, right? Yeah, we're putting it there the night that Fred died. Oh, I don't understand that. That's what I don't understand. Then explain it to us. Your truck, your phone, were there. How do I explain something I don't know? There is no explanation other than the truth, and you were there with your truck and your keys. Who did you have with you? Did you pay someone else? I was always by myself. I don't know why. You borrowed your truck? Then no. it had to be you. I never had nobody with me any time there. It was always yeah, Sherry was you. Yeah, she came and visited. Yes. Yeah. She came there and cheated on her husband with you. It you may know? look like that, I know. It may look like that. Perception is reality, sir. Okay. Perception of the people that saw you there, you had a relationship and it was a very physical relationship. It's not as so physical she was there, as you're saying. She okay. was there cheating on her husband with you. Okay. We established that. We're just revisiting it. It makes you uncomfortable. But that's what it was. We didn't. That's what it is. Make love or nothing like that. No. Well, that's, that's what you're saying. She's probably saying something entirely different. She's thinking as well, she's she telling should. the truth, and then, then that's what she's saying. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes. Okay. They're going to be pointing at you. Okay. And saying that you had met Sherry. Upon your meeting her, she's helping you financially. She's giving you jewelry. She's giving you a, a, a necklace. Okay. I mean, you, nothing major, just you, small. You, we don't know that. We're working on all our financial records now. Okay. okay is she has you come to Myrtle Beach so you can apply for a job. While you're there, best friends, you don't visit her because her husband is around. But you do visit her when the husband's gone. He's out of town. I assume he was. You use your cell phone on a daily basis talking to her. Yes. We established at the motel. There's not other times that you're around. That's yes. other tower. But you did talk to her from the tower that hit on their neighborhood at the time that he was being killed. Okay. Right. And she went back. You left early, even though you paid, which juries listen to this. This is a person that needs employment, seeking jobs, that needs money, pays for motel in advance, and leaves a week or 10 days before it's even up. That's kind of odd. Um, motel staff hears you 
basically confess and depressed. You got things you need to get off your chest. Yes. This is right after Fred's killed. You get a wedding band from her. Yeah. You pretend you're married. You don't show up for a funeral. She's there for all sorts of times for you. Same time she's at a funeral laughing, you're packing up and leaving early to come home. It doesn't fit again, okay? Gavin, guilty. Bye bye. What do I do? I don't know. We are not here to make a promise. We're not here to make a deal. Okay. All I can tell you is we go back to Marble Beach. We take the facts with us. Okay. You get something. A what? You're getting something. Okay. What you get depends on you. What we present to the courts. There again, we can't promise. We take them what we get. Okay. You want a big mercy and ask for them, we'll take it. If you want to sit there and say, I didn't do it, and we'll take all the evidence, and you want to take your chance on the roulette, we'll, we'll do that. I've never met her. <laughs> well, meeting her has put you in a position, okay? It looks now like it's the most crucial thing. When we go back to Oregon County and meet with the prosecutor, the staff, okay, the solicitor's office. Is that care for her? I mean, you know, what I, can't you I care for? Said we don't do it. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, when we go back, you care for what do you want us to tell them? How sorry you are? You want to make it right? Or you want to stay with the lies that you told us today? Make what right? Did you what think happened? that I killed him? We don't think it. We know it. All I know to do is say, you know, find out. I don't know. I mean, you know, you'll find out everything about me. You'll find out that I didn't do nothing wrong. We know you're in Myrtle Beach. We know your truck was there. We have witnesses. We know your cell phone was hit off the tower. You yourself said no one else had your truck. No one else had your cell phone. Therefore, the only person would have been you. At that site, at that time. What did she say? She, you know, that she called you. She called you. Um, she called you about eleven o'clock. She called you right close to midnight. She called you after midnight. She would call me sometimes in the middle of the night. What did she say to you that night? Oh gosh, just, just I don't remember. The what night? The night Mr. Engel was murdered. I don't know what night that was. She said it was missing. It doesn't no matter if it was a Monday or she Friday. Call me, I don't remember. Do you remember her calling saying it was missing? She did call me and said somebody murdered him. When was that? I don't remember what day it was. Did you get up and go to her? No. Why? Because she told me not to. Why would she tell you not to? Because her, her, her because biggest time to leave it since you've ever known her. Because it looked like because you had a relationship we, with her. We, we were friends. Her. But it wasn't like you're saying. How else can it be portrayed? I know how it looks, but that ain't the way it is. Not. What else do I say? I mean, you asked me what did she say when she calls me. I don't remember. No, no, when she calls you in general, the night she called you multiple times, according to the phone records, a lot that of he was murdered. And guess what? You called her. She called you. He left it. He signed off his computer at one minute after 11 p.m., April 21st. At five minutes after 11 p.m., she called you. Okay. Talk for a little bit. Conversation ended. Okay. At 42 minutes after 11 p.m., you called her. Okay. You know why? Because you had to call and tell her the dirty deed was done. The mission's complete. No. I'm back in the mess. That's what I don't understand, what you're saying. Well, that's what we don't understand. Because we would just talk between each other all the time, even in the middle of the night, so, afternoon. In so. the middle of the night when her husband is missing, she's frantically, supposedly, according to her, out looking and trying to find him. She calls just to chat with you, doesn't tell you he's missing, doesn't say, hey, I'll call you back, Fred's gone somewhere. I didn't know when it was. I, I don't remember, I didn't ask. Trust me, yes. you would have known. Cause she was so upset, she passed out and stopped breathing on us. Whether she was or not, I don't know. That's what I heard. Exactly. Yeah. So if you talked to her that night, and you did, cause we had the same phone records to prove it, you wouldn't know exactly what was going on. If nothing strikes you out of the ordinary for any of those conversations, that means you had normal conversations. She was just acting for us. We had normal. You guys were conspiring. You were going over what happened on the phone after you killed it. It doesn't take someone with hardly any IQ at all to figure that out. Because we've already painted the pictures to the point that you realize. Over and over, he keeps saying, boy, this is bad. I wish I'd never met her. You wish you never met her because she lied to you. I she wish I'd never met her. She's only in a murder of her husband. 
That's what happened. Yeah. If you see it that way, the jury's going to see it that way. I wish I we just got through with a murder trial. I'm not care for it, but we just got through with a murder. Would, would, we just got through with a murder trial. Bit. Okay, listen. The things that you we just to we just got through with a murder trial last night. Guy sat there the same way you did, okay, and said that I didn't do it. The overwhelming evidence, whether it was DNA, whether it was witnesses or whatever, proved it. Okay, and that case wasn't as good as this one. Okay, he just got locked. He's okay. gone. There is no seeing the jails. His, his coming out is going to be like Fred's. Okay, is you're going to come out in a pine box. Okay, you won't get the oak one or whatever he got. You're going to get a pine. The state ain't going to fess up to to pay that much money for you. You get a pine box, so that's how you're coming out next time you see freedom. The death penalty is on the table. Do you understand that? Yes, I guess I do. I don't understand why you're telling me this. Because you murdered Fred Eagles, and now you're trying to cover it up. That's why. That's correct, what happened. Correct me if I'm wrong. There was a phone calls that night, but didn't it kind of cease after that? Did the phone calls cease your records, Joseph, after the, that night? It's like you had a lot of conversations, then you kind of had your plan together. Well, I won't talk to her anymore for a while. That make it like there isn't anything. When the game was up, it was too late. You'd already laid the groundwork with the phone records showing that you planned this. Afterwards, I believe, I may be wrong, then it kind of slowed up back then. I guess it's now when she says, well, don't talk to me. Let's, you know, let's be quiet and let's not have any communication. She didn't ask me not to talk very much because she's just going through a lot. Did she tell you that she thought she was smarter than us and maybe that you do too? Because because we went there that night and looked at her phone and asked her who she called. She gave it to us. Uh But she'd already deleted the incoming and outgoing calls for you. But they're on paper. Okay. There's no denying it. They were there, but she thought she was smart enough by taking them off the phone. Yeah, if did. your husband just got missing, just got killed, why don't you sit there and delete Mr. Rogers' phone, phone calls from incoming and out? I don't know. You know, Tim. Look here, bud. Yes. You got to get right on this. At 2305 on April 21st, she called you. You talked for 38 seconds. She okay. called you and said, hey, I just sent him to the mailbox. Are you where you're supposed to be waiting on him? You said, yeah. All right, he's on the way. He's got on a green shirt and jeans and his glasses. You said, all right, he hung up. He went down there. You jumped him. You beat him. You murdered him, and you drug him in the woods, and you got in your car. You drove back to your motel. And at 2342, your number called her number and talked to her for 192 seconds, okay? After that conversation was over, at three minutes after midnight, she called you and you talked for 448 seconds. Guess what? She's already admitted to us multiple times that she discovered her husband was missing at 10 minutes to midnight. And three minutes after midnight, she called you again. You know why? Let's go ahead and get her story straight one more time. Okay. No, not us. You and her. Oh. She said, here's what happened. Here's where you are. Here's where I was. Are you sure he's dead? There ain't no question about it. That's where is he? Where can we find him? So I can tell the police to go there. That's what, That's what you talked about. Well, I understand it because it's right here on paper. Because I can't remember I understand what it. talked about. We know, Jimmy. What not. Stop minimizing. You know what happened because you did it. No, I didn't. You know she talked me into it. She promised you money. She promised you whatever. She promised you the world. No. You wanted to get married with her. I always did want to. Exactly. We know that. that. See, we've been sitting happen. here talking with you for two hours about you wanting to marry her. And that's the first time you've ever. admitted, Hutch, that's the first time you've admitted it. Okay? Every time we push you on these points, you double back and eventually, oh, I've said enough minimization that I can go ahead and reveal the truth now and I won't look as bad. What you don't realize is you steady shoveling dirt out of the hole and keeping yourself in it. You go into the penitentiary, and if you're not careful, you go into the electric chair. This paper right here is all you need to see, sir. Okay. That's all you need to see. That alone, without the DNA, is probably going to convict you and put you on South Carolina's death row. Right here on this paper. There's no way you can mumble and stumble and look up and try to come up with as many excuses as you want. You can't explain that away. I'm just trying to figure out what and neither can do, she. What I need to say. What, what I need, you need to say is why he killed him. Because we don't want Timmy Rogers to be the only person sitting on the inside of SCDC looking out, wishing they hadn't made a mistake. Sherry Engel needs to be sitting in the other wing on the female side doing the same thing. Mr. Rogers, yes. forget what he's saying about death penalty. Forget that, okay? Yeah, this may this may not even be a death penalty case, okay? We don't know that. But let's say life in prison. You're how old now? Forty. How old do you expect to be? 
What do you What do you wish to be? Seventy five, eighty. I don't know. Okay, eighty. Yeah, so yeah. half your life has been in freedom. Okay, and you are depressed now. Yeah. How depressed do you think you're going to be for the next half of your life? The same amount of time you've already been on Earth is going to be inside a cell. But how can it be inside of a cell whenever I didn't do nothing wrong? Your car was there. Your phone was there. You yourself said no one else had your car or phone. Or I apologize, your truck. You've you've tried to change things. You've changed your truck's look. You've done these things. I mean, someone that's down and out that's, that needs a job is spending money on cans of paint to paint out in a parking lot it when they should be having that food or gas. Something to do. Yeah. Something to do is going and knocking on the door and asking, can I get a job? That makes no sense. That's the least your worries is priming a car or a vehicle to make it look worse than what it did to begin with. You pull up somewhere and ask for a job, it's better to look like you're presentable, dress nice, and pull up in a vehicle that looks like it's going to get you to work, because that means a lot. Someone sees you come up in a red truck and says, this man will be dependable. It looks like he's got a truck, he's going to show up every day. The next day you come up in a primer vehicle, you're trying to get a job. Man, I don't know if that truck's going to get him there. You know, he might not be reliable, dependable. You that. aren't going to get that I job. I never thought about nothing like that. Well, evidently you don't think, okay? You didn't think you didn't think, think that killing Fred would get you sitting here across the table from us and listening to this. You thought you'd get by with it. You haven't. It's caught up with you. I haven't got by with nothing. Denial does not going to get you by. What denial is denial. not going to get you by? I guarantee it. Okay. The the truth is all I know to say. Okay. And you asked me. You you a long way from the truth. We already know the truth. If you only knew. <laughs> If we only knew, we do know. If you could read my mind. Okay. We weren't read my mind. We weren't there. Yeah. Okay. We're not about to lie. We're not about to say we're sitting in the bushes or doing all that. Police officers most of the time are reactive. That means we came afterwards, not proactive. We try and ride the streets and try and stop things from happening, but most of the time we respond to calls afterwards. Okay. But if you ever watch TV, and I'm sorry to say watch CSI or whatever else like that, yeah. you'll see. Most of the time they catch the people. Okay. Yeah. We've caught the bad guy. Caught two of them. You're sitting here, though, and sitting across the street. Don't call me the bad guy. You are. Please. You're the worst one, okay? She manipulated you. Person. That's what. That's the thing, Timmy. We know you're a good person. That is not that's what she would always tell She me. talked you in. While you're vulnerable, while you're down and out, she's seen it. She's been setting you up for a year, giving you that necklace, giving you that ring, getting you wrapped around her finger. You got a ring around yours, but you got her, okay? She's got you wrapped around hers. And she's coaxed you into doing this. She's brainwashed you into going and doing something and giving you this pretense that she was going to marry you. I didn't do nothing wrong, but I do agree that at certain times I always questioned why she would do stuff, but I always thought it was for the best that she would know what was best for me because, you know, she is more intelligent than I am. Okay, she's a lot better. No one's, she's, she's no one's saying you're more intelligent than she is. Well, I mean, I know myself, you know, I'm not but, the right. Here comes one where you come in here and you're talking about Bobby's sermons and preaching at the house and it doesn't matter what denomination you are. It's still that if you believe in some type of God or some sort of religion, that how is it okay to take one's life? It's not okay to take one's okay, life. Okay, so therefore... You still... You still therefore but, I, but you don't have to live by the laws of the commandments. I can, and I don't understand, but I'm saying if they were people out on the street that were drug dealers, had guns, they're always into violence, you know, you somewhat understand it. Someone ripped you off of money or dope, you're mad. You've never been in trouble before. Right. You're a man that's looking for for help. You're going to someone that's, that's having Sunday prayer things. Yes. That, but somehow you got entangled with Sherry, and she talked you into this. Okay. No. Yes. She did. No one else? Okay. If she didn't, if Sherry didn't talk you into it, there's no doubt in our mind that you had a hand in the death of Fred. If she didn't talk you into it, then you went and did it on your own. She's been talking about how she's been beaten, how she's been assaulted in the past, yes. and you took it upon your own to be the Savior and go in and take away this other person. Oh. And then think of you be the shining light armor knight or whatever and come in later and get married. You've already got the ring. Uh, at first, when we first, excuse me, when we first met, you know, I, I, I was thinking because she was perfect, you know, she was just everything in the world that I ever wanted. Yeah, but then after I found out she was married, I mean, that, that added to the depression too. And I never wanted to tell her that because I didn't want to hurt her. You, know? you, you think when you're in jail, always, 
You think when you're in jail, she's, if she was to say, and I, from what we're hearing from the other ones, she's going to be in jail with you. That's not in the if. But if the jury found you more responsible because you actually took his life and she just talked you into it or paid you for doing it or whatever, she gets less time. When she gets out, do you think she's going to write new letters or is she going to be looking for the next victim? I don't know. I know I'm not going to be in there because I didn't do nothing wrong. Would it surprise you? That. We already knew your criminal record, right? Would it surprise you to tell you we've already researched her past husbands, found out that they didn't beat her? That's just a story she told you. I, I wouldn't believe it. So basically, anything Sherry says is the gospel. And anything we see is kind of suspect and probably well, not I true. Well, I kind of question because what you're saying to me that, that you kind of you can see that I'm not thinking real fast. I don't think real fast. That maybe you kind of but throw it, things here and there to, to confuse me. In an hour, 40 minutes and 43 seconds. Okay, that's how long this device has been running. Okay. Almost two hours. If you're not thinking real fast, you're thinking slow. In almost two hours, you should have been able to get a grasp on what we're talking about. I do understand kind of what you're talking about. I don't understand why you're blaming me for this. But I do understand that you've got me here. I question. Hate, hate to repeat for that. Hate to repeat stuff. Why have we got you here? Because you think that I killed him. Okay. And your truck was at the scene where he was killed. That's what you think that it was there. Right. It's not what night. we think. That's what we know. Okay. That your phone was used at the scene that same night. Well, from I don't a tower. Know, it couldn't have been. But did, no one else borrowed it. No, nobody. Ever no one stole it. it. You had it when you went to Myrtle Beach. You had it when you came back. Yeah. It was used at that tower. So you had to know it. which tower. I mean, I don't know where I was every time. I okay, don't but a tower it. that is taking signals from the same area where Fred was killed, Mr. Angle was killed. Your phone was used right there. Okay. And you were having conversations not, not that, with Sherry. Place. It must have been, I don't know. I don't know. Those towers have a limited circle of where they pick up. Okay. 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 It was there. <laughs> Because we knew when you left there, you were hitting off the, the motel. You went back to the motel. Let me explain something else to you about this tower. Let me draw some out for you. Okay. He says they have a limited range that they reach out. Okay. Okay. Well, the tower we're talking about is right here. Okay. The crime scene is right here. Well, the area that you were staying before is way over here. Okay. The only way that your cell phone could have reached that tower is you being there. You know why? Everything in this direction, that way, is nothing but pine trees. There's not a thing out there. So there's only one place you can be because there's only one set of paved roads and that's in this subdivision. Okay, I don't understand why you're getting It makes a circle like that. This is woods. So we take half that distance out. You were somewhere on this half of the circle. The crime scene was right over here. And I, I don't understand that. Okay. That's what I don't understand. Okay, well, the way a cell phone signal works, okay? okay. It comes out from a tower. It was like a radio tower, okay? Okay. Where the crime scene is at is this little square right here. That's where Freddie was murdered. Okay. Okay, that's what it represents. And I'm drawing this like if that is north. You know what? I'll tell you better. I'll show you a picture. How about that? Okay. I got a picture right here. Like I said, we've done our homework. We know most of these answers. What size shoes do you wear? 13. Okay. All right. I'm setting this up just like this is north. Okay, that's the way most stuff in a map goes. That's north, okay. all right? Up here okay. to the top. Okay. Well, the cell phone, you see, what's all this area out here? I guess, was it grass or woods or just That's pine trees. Okay. Uh, you've been to Myrtle Beach, you know we covered up in pine trees. Yeah. That's all we got everywhere. Oh, trees, yeah. All this area here, from this point here, and all this, back that direction is nothing but these pine trees right here. That's okay. all there is. Okay. The cell phone tower we're talking about is basically right here. Okay. okay. This is the only subdivision down here in the back of this road. Okay. Yeah. Right? Oh. Mr. Angle was killed in this area right here. Okay. Okay. So if somebody's in this area right here, they're going to be hitting off this cell phone tower right here. And not That's only it works. Not only that, you pass a trooper down this road. The witness goes down here and watches your truck go into there. She saw you out here and saw you right there. That's a long way. That's, that's not a major road you're going to McDonald's. That only goes back to the house. Also, you were driving so enough. slow because the trooper spooked you so bad that she passed you and probably gave you a rude gesture and inside of her own car cursed you out because she told us that. 
went on about her way ahead of you, got in the subdivision. After she gets to her house, she pulls in her own driveway, gets her stuff out, and is about to get ready to go in her house. When you come pull in the subdivision, your truck with the lights off. Well, you know what? If you pulled in my subdivision with lights off, I'd take You'd notice. Be worried to about it. Yeah. I would. That's exactly what I'd be. I'd be concerned. Yeah. And so was she. So she stopped behind her car and peeked out and watched your truck pull up and back into that mailbox station, huh. facing it, where anyone that came walking down the street to their mailbox, you'd get a perfect view of them coming all the way down the street, all the way to their mailbox. That's what I don't understand. You know, you know, you're know, you going to have your time to report, right? Okay. To, to say your side of the story. Yes. And we're going to have our people that go up there and swear. Yes. That young lady that seen that truck is going to be sitting up there telling her story. Over to the jury, it's sitting in all these chairs, okay? Okay. That how she described the truck, how it reacted, how it was driving, how the lights were off. And you're going to be sitting in front of it. And they're going to ask, I know. who do you think was yeah. driving that vehicle? You don't think she's going to be pointing to you? If she won't be pointing to me. Look, what? She won't be pointing at me. Yes, sir, she will. You honestly think that you're going to get by with this? I didn't do nothing. Well, there's another aspect to the law in our state. Okay. They use this terminology. They actually use it here, too. They probably don't refer to it quite as often as we do. It's called the hand of one is the hand of The what? The hand of one is the hand of all. Okay. And a good way to describe this, and it sounds overly morbid, but if I were to stand up right now and kill Detective Livingston with you sitting right there, if you made no attempt to stop me, and you made no attempt after to contact law enforcement tell them what happened, uh -huh. you're getting charged with murder too. Well, uh, this wide-eyed wide stare you're giving us, it's not. Uh -huh. You know a lot more about this than you tell us. You just got to decide to share it with us. Well, you got to you got to help Timmy Timmy out. Yes, and I'm trying to. Nobody else to know what to say. I can promise you things. that there ain't nobody left that's going to help you with anything but Neil and I. Okay. Okay. The so only way we can do that. Is, you know what we can do. We've been talking about it for two hours now. I said we can't promise you anything, but we can take back the truth. And you haven't told that you haven't told that you haven't told the truth. Yes, I have. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you realize part of our training now, is to... Can I, can I say something, please? Yeah. Okay. I forget sometimes what I'm saying. Okay. And and I'm really hard to understand. If you knew me, I'm kind of hard to understand. Apparently, I'm learning that. We're, I'm, we're understanding. I'm understanding. Okay. Okay. Perfect. okay. But some of the things that I say... What were you talking about? You, you forget things? Yes. I think if someone did something traumatic as to go in some of the girlfriend's neighborhood and kill her husband, they wouldn't forget that. That is something that's going to be embedded in your mind, and yes. that's why you're back in the hotel telling the staff how bothered you are. But what I was trying to explain is that sometimes when I say things, it makes it look... This is the same thing me and my wife, ex-wife had. Sometimes when I say things, it makes it look like I'm guilty of, of doing it. Like she, it's, not what she, it's not what you've done or what you've said. Because we came into this room knowing facts before we talked to you. So nothing you said influenced us to come up here. We didn't even talk to you till today. Right. So we had hard facts, evidence, witness statements, telephone records that said you did it. It's not what you said. I don't know why you got said you know, that. We, we've been through two states. South Carolina, if you get a arrest warrant. We presented those facts to a judge and told them they felt strong enough to get the arrest warrants. It's not the same judge that's going to be trying it, but they're the same judge that says, I'll give you a arrest warrant. I feel that there's more than enough evidence to go after this person. We came to another state, presented the facts again, pick you up, and also get search warrants for the residents. There is an abundance. We didn't have any problem. We didn't have to answer any questions that judge. We didn't have to go back over anything. It was clear. Because it looked bad because we were seeing each other. No, it looked bad because those phone records. It looked bad because your truck was there. It looked bad because your phone was being used where he was being killed. It looked bad because all the phone calls you had back and forth with Sherry that night. We had a bunch of them all the time. Yeah, she's hysterical. She's passing out on that day. I but if she's her. talking to you, you would remember it if she, she was hysterical. Her being you didn't hysterical. talk to her. You know that her husband died. The threat is gone as far as Fred. Him him being around for you That's what to talk to me. Okay. Yeah. So if you wouldn't talk to her if you talk to her quite a bit, I'm sorry I'm going back. If you talk to her quite a bit, 
with Fred alive. Okay, he's gone. He's deceased. Okay. He's laying in a morgue or a funeral home. Okay. You haven't talked to her. You didn't talk to her on the phone the next day the way you have. If anything, that's more of the time. We she talk. needs you. We have you talked talk to her. Now, according to phone records, that's slowed down. We have talked to every day. There's you never been a day. You didn't go to the funeral. You didn't go to the funeral. Right. You haven't talked to her since then. So it looks even worse that you two are saying, well, let's split apart. They're not smart enough to figure this out. All of a sudden, after the murder, they're going to start checking phone records, not before. And they're going to start seeing who I'm with. It don't work that way. We go back. We go back a long way. And we start seeing what led up to it. Okay. And all that evidence, how close you were up until his death. And if you're good friends, the jury's going to think you would be even closer. You two did this number. Best of friends there for each other in the worst well, of times. Her like husband dies. Time. No, it wasn't. The day he died, yeah. you were best of friends and talking on the phone. The next day, you split up. Just for a little while, she said, let's, let's take, let's cool it down and stay apart so they don't figure it out because they're going to start looking at phones from this number. I don't before. understand that part, but I do understand the parts of where some days she would only call me for a few minutes, but she did ever miss today. day call. Do you, do you admit that? But then she, there was days that we talked a bunch on the phone. Do you admit that you have not talked to her on the phone as much after his death as you did before? Because I'm depressed and she's depressed. I don't want to, and I can't, and two, I can't say two depressed people, things to her. Two depressed people would help each other. You comfort each other. I, I can never say anything to comfort her. That's what, she'd always say things to comfort me. The reason you had to talk as much on the telephone is because you've been together. The die, Mr. Engels, on oh, memorial yeah. service. Yeah, yeah. 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 You just remember, you got a relationship with her, right? Yes. Yeah, I remember that too. I remember yes. that from the beginning. Okay. Mr. Engel's memorial service was the Friday night, April 25th. Saturday morning, April 26th, everybody loads up and goes to Kentucky. Timmy comes along. So she doesn't talk to you. You know why? Because she's traveling with you. There's not much point in talking on the phone. He's right here. Let's talk to him. No. That's what I don't, remember remember when I, I don't remember when I came up here. Exactly. Come on, Timmy. I really I don't remember. It's, you are much sharper than that. You are not going to tell me that you don't remember the kind of drive that that is going from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to Hardinsburg, Kentucky. Yes. On Saturday, April 26th. Okay. Is that the day it was? Yes, sir. Okay. I don't remember that. You don't remember that? I don't remember that. Well, your cell phone does. You know why? Because the cell phone tower says, hey, Timmy's in Myrtle Beach. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, bang, he's in Hartsburg, Kentucky. Okay. So the cell phone tells us exactly when he did, and also tells us between that, that was one of the very few periods over the last several months that there wasn't phone calls between you and Sherry because you traveled together. You remember all about it. You just know how bad it's going to make you look. We didn't travel together. You did? did? No. So why didn't you talk to him? I don't remember. I, I don't, don't know. She, we, I'm sure she would have called me. She called me every day. She did. It's because you were traveling from Myrtle Beach to Kentucky together after completely mm -hmm. murdering her husband. No. You had to come back here and have another service so everybody in this community would know that Fred Engel was dead. And now Timmy and Sherry can have a relationship. We didn't travel. Carry out what the vow this little ring on his finger means. We didn't travel together. This was just a gift, too. But we didn't travel together up here. God, I can't. Your remember. wife cheated on you. Yes. Okay, so that was a hard time. You're saying it was a hard time getting over it. Yeah. The last thing I want to look at, if I'm going through all this, I'm out of a job, I'm broke, I lost all my worldly possessions to my ex. That's one thing. Okay. I've been there. Family court will we'll break it. Okay. The last damn thing I want in my hand is another ring. But this was just kind of a reminder. Uh, is a reminder of the hell you've been through for what was it? How many years? Eighteen years or something well, like that. That's, that's something too. It was a reminder of your relationship with Sherry, and it was a reminder you know, right. for all these other ladies around here to stay away from this six foot three, blue eyed, red haired man that they might want to get their hooks in. He belongs to Sherry Engel. I don't think anybody would want to get their hooks in me. Well, <laughs> perception's reality. You're a handsome fellow. You're tall. You're broad shouldered. Come on now. Add it up. Uh, and you're willing to go do a dirty deed for somebody. somebody. I'm sorry. But then you're willing to go do something for somebody. Yeah, take I'll away, help take away people as much as yeah, I can. Help. You help her. You help her out of a bad situation. She was in a marriage she didn't want to be in, didn't, didn't like it from the very get go. No. She got in it for the money. And if she divorced him, she'd be like you. She'd lose everything. He's killed. She's got all the life insurance. She policies. has talked about divorcing him before, but I don't know. You know. And she told me she'd lose all her money, right? Mm hmm. 
I don't know. I never you asked You know how much she stood to gain? she tell you how much the life insurance know. policies were? Uh-uh. She didn't ever tell you how much she's getting ready no. to get? No. I'm not going to tell you. Okay. But I don't understand the part where you think that we were intimate as far as that. <laughs> the jury sitting over here I know is going to hear the I hotel do? staff coming up. And you saying it's a casual relationship, there's a hug. How there's a you? difference between a hug and having your tongue down and getting her tonsils. Yeah. The that, two of you had, did you not have your tongue in her throat? A little bit. A little bit. And I don't, it ain't like what you're saying. According to these people, it was. Just like this detective said, they were pretty much coming over and getting ready to tell you, go get in your room. You know, there's kids that are walking by, things yeah, like I that. I don't think we ever acted like that. Out you watch TV? You yes. watch movies? Yes. Think about this. Let, okay. let me stop you. All right, let's stop one time. Time is 1732. Change the batteries. They're getting away. Need these bathroom real quick. Yeah, actually, yeah, we got a bathroom right here. Look. Today's date is May 5th, 2008. Time is approximately 1737 hours. Uh, interview being continued after changing the batteries, allowing Mr. Rogers to go to the restroom, getting him a drink. Uh, nothing else happened in that time. We're just resuming the interview. Like I said, that you will be faced with an extradition hearing to what that means is to get you back to Horry County or South Carolina where there'll be a trial for this offense. Okay. okay. You've been charged with whatever, what charges does he have against him? At this point, it's just murder. And there's going to be a couple of them. Okay. When you get back, there's going to be additional. Ask you our charges against me for the murder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you, you want to be read the, the warrant, see what it is? We're not serving on you, but we'll read it to you. Okay, we're not going to serve it right now. But let us, maybe that's what it takes is you to see that we're not bluffing. A judge who signed an arrest yeah. warrant. Okay. This isn't being served. Just kind of give you a heads up on one of the charges. You're going back. It's not a threat. There's going to be more charges coming. You let them, let them think about it, what the charges would be. All right, this is what our standard warrant looks like. You know, we're not serving with you. We'll have to do that with you back when we're back in Horry County. Okay. Now, you can see my signature is in blue ink, the judge's signature in blue, and it's stamped originals. Okay. We ain't shooting you no line on this. Uh -huh. uh, personally appeared before me, the athlete, Joseph Halls. Matches right there. Okay. So that'll be me. Okay. Being duly sworn, opposes and says that defendant, Timmy J. Roberts, did within this county and state on or about April 22nd, 2008, violate the criminal laws of the state of South Carolina in the following particulars. On April 22nd, 2008, when Frederick Nicholas Engel was found deceased in a wooded area behind the mailbox station at the southeast end of Balmore Drive in the Carolina Forest section of Oi County. Detectives with the Horry County Police Department initiated an investigation which revealed the manner of death was homicide, which is murder. This investigation has shown probable cause to believe that the defendant was directly responsible for the victim's death through the careful review of cell cellular telephone records, video surveillance footage, lawful searches, circumstantial evidence, witness statements, and other evidence gathered through the course of this investigation. Based on this information, the affiant is informed and believes that probable cause exists to establish that the defendant did commit the offense of murder a violation of South Carolina Code of Law, Section 16-3-10. It's signed by me right there. Okay. And the maximum could be life. All right, so as soon as everybody finds out everything, I'll be everybody able. finds out everything. Based on the evidence that he just told you about, yeah. I feel strongly. Nobody knows certain. I can't tell you 100%. But I'm telling you, based on past facts, previous cases, 90, 95% chance. You want to take those odds? That you're I don't guilty. Like those odds at all. No. That's that's what we're dealt with. That's what we're presenting. If the truth comes out, I'll be okay. That's all I know. The truth comes out. Is there another truth? Is there another truth that you can share with us no. that you've kind of kept from? Everything I tell you is honest truth. And ask me, ask me things. How many pairs of shoes you own? Uh, one right now. One. Are you wearing them? Yes. You don't have any more. I had another pair of tennis shoes that I threw away. Okay. Where'd you throw them away at? Oh gosh. That's been several months ago. It was in E-Town when I was staying at the motel. Several months ago. Yeah. So you had, had any other pair of shoes? No. Why would you throw a pair of shoes away? Because they were old. They were falling apart. 
Still, it's a backup pair. If you need to go do some yard work, go out and... I know, but they were falling apart, so they weren't worth it. What color were they? They were white tennis shoes. It's kind of like the... I think so they were white shoes. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, white shoes look kind of goofy if you didn't have white laces in Yeah. Yeah. What would you do with them before you threw them away? They were just sitting in the room. I mean, that day oh. when you actually threw them away, did you do anything oh. to them? No, I don't remember. I didn't remember throwing them away. Okay, you don't remember specifically doing anything with them at all? No. Just talk to mm -hmm. you. sure that was in E-Town? Mm -hmm. When were you in E-Town? In my, I don't remember the exact days. In my thing at Bobby and M's house is a folder with all the, the receipts from the motel room that where I stayed in E-Town. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll have that because we're doing a search warrant okay. in the hotel when I was there, and I don't remember exactly when. That's exactly the kind of thing that they're looking for. Okay, in the search room. Okay. You know that you painted your truck after it was seen where Fred died. You also got rid of a pair of shoes when we've got plastic molds of footprints or impressions out there in the dirt. Is that why you got rid of them? Afraid we're going to find your footwear? No. no, I threw them away a long time ago. Your size of your I shoes. Know, several, we'll measure your shoes. Swing, your right? shoe is still going to match up to what size we got out there. I don't know. Just I mean, just because you you don't have the same pattern, you still got the same size. Two, three clothes away too. They have blood on them. I didn't have no. I didn't do nothing. Size thirteen. Yeah. Or fourteen. Thirteen or fourteen. You know what size impressions? You know what size impressions they got out there? What? 13. Really? It looks like Bigfoot was walking around up there. There's another thing that looks bad. There's another nail in that coffin. I know it. Yep. That's not it's a coincidence. A, that coffin's about built. All the nails we're putting in it so is. So what do I do? The truth. I know. You're not telling the truth. Yes, I am. You are this close to telling the truth, okay? See it in your eyes. What I started to say earlier, and you, you got sidetracked and you stopped me is that in our line of work, part of it is going to schools to see if people are lying or telling the truth, okay? And mannerism, while I'm sitting here, I can't see your feet, I'm sure this gentleman right here is watching your movement, okay? And either by the way you're moving, yeah. you're looking, your speak, or your speech, or you're answering questions quickly and then slow, it's not because the slow you're talking about, it's because you're thinking on how to answer it, because that question is going to be answered with a lie. Some some questions, I mean, I do know right off. Some of them I have to think about. That's because I don't to, want to. You have to go to the story that you and Sherry created. Because I don't want to make it look bad. That's always been the way it was. That's where my ex-wife used yeah, to do. Sherry telling you the way things were and what story was. No, that's, it's that's the way been. my ex-wife used to do. She yeah. would that's the way your current wife, in your eyes, Sherry Engel does. She's my angel. It's all. I totally understand that. Yeah. And I understand why you feel that way. And there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. Because she didn't tell you the truth. She led you down a path and you kinda of got a little further along than you should. Given the circumstances. Hurt a bit. Yes, of course it hurt, Kenny. You're a human being. That's why it makes work. That's what she always told me about me though. That doesn't make you a bad person. Okay? okay. She pulled wool over your eyes on that. And I think she's continued to tell you what you think and tell you what you're going to do and what your story is going to be. I do help. Anything she asks for me to do, I do help her. Like yes. get rid of her husband. No. We know. What's your ex wife's boyfriend like? Or husband or whatever it is now? He, he was pretty good guy? Yeah. Ever had a criminal record? I don't know. Okay. Kind of like you. Aren't you glad that she didn't talk him into killing you? Like Sherry talked you into killing Fred. But she didn't talk me. And Tammy would have talked him into killing me. And that people, people would have thought Sherry would have talked you into it. Thought she was nice. Thought you were nice. But it happened. It did happen. No. Yes, sir, it did. It doesn't make you a bad person. A bad person would kill somebody. But if you did it and it wasn't pre planned, you didn't get money, you did it while you're sitting there depressed in that motel room and she calls you up and he's beat me or whatever else and you snapped and you went and did something. Those are things we can work with, sir. The things we can't work with is your constant denial because we've got a mountain to go up and you, you're not going to climb it at the pace you go. Okay. You can't keep doubling back on the things you've said and trying to rearrange them. I don't see it. And make it look better. I look, I really the question is not whether you did it to us or the jury. It's going to be what was your motive, okay? Was it for love or for money? There is no other question. We know you're there. We can put you there. Just don't keep, I'm not going to go back over why. Okay, we, us, witnesses, telephone records, everything else, there is no denying it. We can put you where Fred died at that time. 
Okay, no denial. All the facts can support it. We can put you in a relationship with sheriff, with witnesses, either here in this state or back at our state. It's been going on for a long time. We can build this case up. We can show the pattern of her love for you, your love for her. Whether you could do it financially and she could for you, her giving you jewelry, you giving her a car, okay? But it got to that point that the two of you are tired of meeting or talking by phone, meeting on the side of the road, in parking lots, or off on the side, or when Fred's gone on his trips. You had to have more. After a year, it got to the point, there's gotta be some break in it. The break was Fred had to go. She already talked about a divorce. She knew what happened in divorce. You knew what happened. You lost everything. Both of you come out broke. She's already retired or whatever. Neither one of you have a job. What kind of life is that? When you've got someone that's got plenty of life insurance policies, if they're gone, you've got a good life for both of them. But you're, you're already married. you already got a ring. And it's not as though that's a friendship ring. Okay, We neglect them to say something else. And when we come in here, we don't throw names out. We don't come in and say Joseph told us that you were hugging. And Neil said that you got this ring because we don't want you to start causing trouble for the people that are working with us, okay? That are helping us. What they're doing is being a voice for Fred. Fred's no longer around, so people feel sorry. They said, we are going to make it right. We're going to stand up. We're going to speak for him, okay? If someone came up and said, you were bragging about that ring, that it was like a wedding band, okay? It was more than a friendship. You told some of that. I don't remember saying that was more than you, a friend. I wouldn't think you would have said that, but you I did. Like you, the ring. They pretty much basically said you almost had a ceremony, that you were married, okay? Mm -hmm. And what do you think is going to happen? This is a big story for both Horry County and for Kentucky. You know, the next thing is going to be, the media is going to have this. Okay. They're going to have it in Myrtle Beach saying, we've literally locked up the killers. Okay. We've arrested people for the death of Mr. Engel. Up here is going to be hometown folks arrested, taken back for that. We were already getting calls about you, about her, about your rendezvous and what's going on. There's some people that were going, maybe, but I don't think. You know, Timmy's a good guy, Sherry's a good guy. All's going to say, hey, I was scared of him because, you know, he killed one person. I didn't want to come after me. This is what I want to tell you. I've seen them here. I've seen them there. Or other people that just said, I want to get involved. I want to speak for Fred. We're going to start getting some more calls. It's going to make this case nothing but stronger. And while you're sitting in jail for whatever time it takes to get to court, we're not through. We don't turn this in. We're taking more information. We're doing more things, like I said, the financial records, things like that. This case is doing nothing but getting stronger. And you're getting nothing but weaker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I get weaker, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. I mean, I've been depressed. But you make it sound like that we were married and we were kind of having to do You stuff yourself like that. said it's like a wedding band. She told you that. But it wasn't in that context. The only thing separating it was you didn't go in front of a preacher. Did Bobby do a sermon for you? Did he do a ceremony? No. Okay. But in the eyes of the two of you, you said earlier, you were basically married. No. No. We were best friends. We were really close. She gave me this that's, ring. Just that's why we have the recorder, is yeah. so we can go back. And I, I apologize if I'm wrong, but I will, would bet money. I can't do it. It's illegal, okay? But on that tape, in there, I recall you talking about being like a wedding, being married. No, I don't remember saying anything about us being married. Sometimes I do say things, you know, taken out of context that other people do take it the wrong way and that's what I'm trying to be real careful to tell everything the right way that so you don't misunderstand if you knew me you would understand I think we do know you okay I think we know you pretty well okay I think you got in over your head the said to Timmy Rogers that your past history paints for us I think somebody led you down a path and showed you off the cliff my personal share. She's just been a really good friend to me and stuff, helping me through. And you're helping her through. She would say that I was helping her, but I never really seen how I was helping her. I mean, killing, I never thought killing Fred got enough. enough. Killing Fred was helping her. I, got her money. I didn't do that. If we hadn't intervened and come come here today, yes. how long would it have been before the two of you were together sharing a house? When was she moving back up here and you're moving in? 
I had no plans. I don't. You hadn't discussed that. I've never. Word? No, I've never known what I was going to do. I've never known. That was one of the things that she was trying to help me with. Just take it one day at a time, where you're going to be. You know, just one day at a time, and and things will come to you. Still, I'm still waiting for you to explain your truck, your cell phone. Explain my truck. Like what? Being in the neighborhood. The neighborhood. Eyewitnesses are going to get on the When I first the plastic over it, too. No, sir. That's, you said that's the daytime. We're talking night. It's dark. And I wasn't sure about it. Okay. Uh, and what was the other thing? The your phone. Your phone being used at night. Night. The same night. She was same calling. night your truck was seen there. Your phone was used there. I don't remember what night she does call me. And that, you know, that may it have been every, every, every night, every day. You it doesn't call each other constantly. It doesn't matter what night. It doesn't matter if it was Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. Forget the day of the week. Okay. There was a night. A night. That a witness that will come to court, that has already done this little tape recording, that is prepared to come back up, play back, and stand up there, and say that your truck was acting in a suspicious manner, was driving slow when it passed that trooper, she passed, you pulled in, you pulled in with her, turned off your lights, said where you parked. I don't know anything about that. I really don't, I don't know. Stick, stick with that story, because we are gonna blow it out of the water. All those witnesses, you're gonna be like some other person that's been up on trial, and the witnesses come in and take your story apart, okay, okay. is you're going to walk out a guilty man going to prison and wondering what difference it would have made. That's what scares me because so many people that are innocent get put away for things. Really? They, you you know, honestly believe that. Yeah. A, lot of people, a lot of people put away for the things they did do. I think that number yeah. that number outweighs you. Yeah. Okay, if the system may have failed. I've always been there. And there may be. It's a minute amount. I think we do a pretty good job. And so does the crime scene, the labs and all that, and putting the right people in prison. Yeah. And I think, I think we're on the road to doing the right I job. I this time. to you all. No, 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 we don't, we don't think no I'm just trying to tell you that I feel strongly that you will be convicted. Okay. And it's because, not of us, it's a joint effort. Everybody's had a hand on that puzzle. We're waiting on the last couple of pieces to go in there. Okay. That, that picture is Fred. And that's what everybody's going to be there for. This day is for Fred. Okay. Okay. So that he can lay in rest. Okay. Lay in peace, because his life was cut short. Okay. And, and you think it's hard to sit here with us? That jury said that jury is going to be listening to everything everybody else says. Yeah. Okay. We're prepared. Right. We're going to be prepared even so more so the more time. As long as I tell what I know, I'm okay. We can't make you say anything otherwise, Jim. Right. We can't. We can't make you say anything else. We don't want to. We're not here with some sort of instrument. We're not holding a gun to your head. We're not doing anything like that. Okay. We're not here to make you say something you don't want to say. We're just trying to get the point across that the evidence outweighs your testimony. Okay. It. So there's nothing. You can do. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I can say. Well, you said if that's what you want to say, then it's documented for the time of court. I'm just telling you, we aren't here to make you change it. If it's that's the truth, that's what you want to stick with, by all means, go with it, okay? I'm just telling you what we've got in evidence, what we've got in statements is not what you were saying. And it's not like we picked one person, we've gone and paid someone to come in here and tell one story. It's a magnitude of people. We're going to have witnesses lined up and waiting to come in and tell stories. Okay. Okay. And the story is not being a story as in a fib, but stories as the truth. And all of them, it's funny that how everybody else's story makes this one picture, this one puzzle. You aren't doing a puzzle, Fred. You're off doing one of your own now somewhere else, painting your truck. That's what your puzzle. You're on a totally different one because your, your puzzle isn't even resembling ours. It's, okay. it's, it's funny you're talking about a puzzle. One of the things that she would say, you know, that as your life goes on, you know, and you, you put it as a puzzle, as picture pieces that you fill in. Okay, well, you're working on a different puzzle, obviously. You aren't playing the same one we are. And if you want to go to court, still staying that way, that's fine. 
but I feel strongly that everybody saying one thing in common and you being totally different is not going to sway the jury. I would think if you're in that jury box and you think that a dozen people come in, two dozen people, however many people it is, whether it's police officers, people from the crime scene, from labs, from witnesses, uh -huh. that they listen to all these stories being the same and they come hear yours and the only thing that's the same is your love for Sherry, you're meeting in a motel room, side roads, whatever, that your truck was seen there, your phone was picked up from there, and that you being the best friend didn't go to the funeral, you just left. What do you think? I know, I know it looks bad. It looks bad, okay. I do know that. Okay. Then she knew that too. She that's why she would tell me to Okay. Not you know. Any anything else that you want to say? If anything else you want to ask me, I well, like sorry, we're not gonna ask you anything else. Well, I think we've asked enough. We're going back over the same things. Okay. I don't think there's a need for that. If there's something that we've overlooked, tell me. If there's something you want to change, now's the time to do it. And I may think of something later that I need to add. I always do that. I think of things later. Well, then you approach us. You call us. You're going to have time. Okay. Okay? Okay. Nothing else that you want to say at this point? Nothing I can think of now. I mean, I don't know what just to... Uh, give me a while to think of things that I can tell you that might be able to You've had This is a new tape starting. You've had over two hours. Okay. So I would that, think that something as vital as someone's life and the livelihood of your life, you would have done thought about it. I wouldn't take no, me. It wouldn't take that, me till that's tomorrow. Me. That's me because I'm just slow right now. Because that, that's what okay. she keeps you because everything that's happened to me. You have for the past a year. necklace that was given to you by Sherry. Yes. You have a ring that was given to you by Sherry. Yes. Do you have any problem with signing those items over to us as evidence? I hate to, but yeah, you can have them. Okay. You want them now? I'm asking you. Yeah, I hate to, but you let me know. Okay. And I don't know if I can get the necklace on. Okay. Anything else that you want to say? I'm giving you the last opportunity before we turn and take off for this interview. Not that I can think of. Okay. Concludes the interview. The time is approximately 1758. In October of 2010, Timmy Rogers was convicted of murder and sentenced to 35 years in prison. He would later appeal that verdict in 2013, but to no avail. The entire case breakdown for those that are interested and the appeal documents are linked below. And in December of 2010, Sherry Engel was sentenced to 30 years in prison for her role in the murder. She pleaded guilty to accessory before the fact of voluntary manslaughter, and she must serve 85% of her sentence before she is eligible for parole. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.